Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Town Council's second retreat. Um, the purpose of the second retreat is basically to review and make any needed changes or additions to the priorities that we drafted at the first retreat, uh, to learn about the priorities related to town operations uh, from Mr. Kelly, and then begin to lay the groundwork for the town's future by characterizing what council envisions for our town in three to five years. So um, having a, something to shoot at would give us an opportunity to begin to map in that direction. Um, I'm going to move locations so I have access to the PowerPoints. So these are our outcomes. We'll have a um, next to last draft of the FY22-23 priorities so that we can move on to the budgeting process, um, a summary of the town operations priorities, and documentation of the Envisioning OKI's future exercise. So um, this morning, we'll review and revise each priority uh, one by one as a group. Uh, we'll take a break about 10 o'clock, and then if we need a working lunch to finish up uh, some of the details, uh, we have that opportunity. Otherwise, it's free time. Um, this afternoon, if you look on the top of the packet that's at your desk, we'll then take time for the envisioning exercise, uh, define, you know what, I left out, uh, no, there it is, okay. Um, the presentation of the town operation priorities, we'll then take another break, envisioning OKI's future, and then define next steps. So what does the budget process look like? How will we wrap up today and move towards uh, final priorities. So you have a stapled packet in front of you. So what I've done is to take the work that we did last time. I extracted it from the minutes that Lisa took for us. So there's a sheet, a worksheet for each of the priorities. And then uh, the last page is a list of verbs that uh, if you can't find the right one, this is just a cheat sheet, to a reference point for goal and objective statements. So the idea is if you look first at the public safety and accessibility goal to ensure pedestrian safety, to remember to bring people along. <coughs> All right, so these are how we'll approach each priority. So we'll review each draft. We basically want to know is the objective specific? Is it measurable and attainable? So some of the objective statements have multiple components in them that were, would perhaps be best broken out. Uh, what are the success indicators so we know what we're trying to accomplish, uh, a general target date for completion, and then do the sum of objectives actually meet the stated goal and purpose? Uh, so we'll do that last. And then are there any dependencies for completion? So um, in order to complete any of the objectives, are is it, uh, are there things that need to precede it in order to make it happen? So that's kind of the process we'll work through. So for priority one, you'll see um, a goal that is lengthy that probably can be broken out. Um, some of it might 
you'll decide might be best put uh, move down to purpose and or uh, move into an actual goal or a success indicator. So each of your objective statements should be something that's very specific, should have a single verb, um, so, and, uh, and then doable. So one of the pieces of the exercise, once we identify the objectives, so for instance, public safety has, currently has five objectives. So we may break them out uh, into multiple objectives, so there's room to record that. But we also may decide that a particular objective can't be accomplished in this next fiscal year. Therefore, we either break it apart and define a verb or a goal, or I'm sorry, an objective that can be done in this fiscal year, and then what needs to follow. So some of them just simply may move some of them may be broken out into two objectives um, because it's, it's not accomplishable in 22-23. And then the other thing that we have to establish is uh, what are the costs for completing that goal um, because that needs to inform the budget process uh, where I'm anticipating some difficult decisions will happen. There, are you okay with moving this forward? Are there any questions? We good? Well, just to be clear, um, to confirm understanding, so just re-examining uh, public safety, the goal structure there clearly needs to be bifurcated into different things. There's several things they're housed together, but they're actually different. And we thought you're asking us then to take a closer look and to break these pieces apart. Is that correct? Either break them apart or or develop a summary goal statement. Okay. Um, the purpose was missing. Uh, the purpose is basically why are we doing this? We don't have to write it here, but to note that it needs to be done, and we can do that offline. Okay. Um, a small, with the council's permission, a small group of us can uh, do some of that work and then uh, bring it back to council um, for your review prior to the April meeting. And then the goal is then to um, put these into play with a motion at the April meeting. As a reminder, you can do that individually, but council can't get together as a group, even though two or three of you to, to do that, unless we call it an official meeting. Right. No, but for instance, Bill and I could work on that, or John and Bill could work on that, right? Mm -hmm. No? Has to be done publicly. Whatever you all want to do. That's fine. Uh, so looking at that first goal, is there... A summary? Is there a, a bigger picture that we can capture? I'm trying to find the smaller picture. I thought we came up with three things we agreed at at the last yes. tree. And I'm seeing like 15 or 20 things that were kicking around. Which document are you looking at? Both of them. I'm the stapled one. I haven't got a stapled one. I've got this little stapled one. That help? Good. Yeah, and Lisa, if one person, if it's better that just one person does that work offline, um, that's perfectly okay too. You just need to let me know what's the proper way to do it. So this first goal talks about pedestrian safety, talks about relationships, talks about ADA compliance,
and uh, creating an aesthetically pleasing streetscape. Is there an overarching statement that would cover each of those? John, I think this was... Well, are you looking for the purpose, or are we jumping into... But how do we break this out? So this is a really long gold statement, and it has multiple parts. So going, going through the process, <coughs> excuse me, um, we've already established, um, two years ago, council came up with a, a three-year capital plan and told us to start working on that so we can lay out things like this in the future as well. Um, some of the ADA compliant things is already within that three-year forecasted plan. Uh, they were part of the improvement plan from last year. Um, and then we have it, you know, follow up in it for this year and then next year for capital improvements. Um, so when we're going through later through our um, consideration of town operation priorities, we'll be addressing some of these things that are in here as well. So I don't know how we need to, how you want to proceed. I mean, it is part of the goal. It is part of the purpose and those things. And we have some of it already incorporated into the budget procedure. Um, which is, you know, a vote at the very end from y'all. Yeah, anyway. no, that would be good to know. I didn't um, know how you want it does to participate or how you want our input. If it's already a goal and I look to, um, to you, Charlie and John, as to whether this is redundant because it's already been established and we need to update council on what determinations we're still acting on from previous councils. Um, yeah, that was... So if that's the case, it's just the missing information for us. But you tell, you tell us is well, which parts of this is redundant. Maybe this would help. Um, I think if we framed out one or two paragraphs describing the work of council and setting these three priorities um, as things to work on. We don't need the purpose statement in each of the goals. It's, it's already in the introduction. It's set. And then looking at number one, so just playing with this for, for a moment. Go ahead. Um, to ensure pedestrian safety in town provide access to public amenities. That's goal one, right? The way we have it, it's split up, but here's another part of goal one. Council's plan will ensure that community is ADA compliant. That belongs with access and safety. So does public safety and, as part of the public safety and accessibility plan, council will work with management to create a more aesthetically pleasing streetscape. So those three things need to be one. That's all goal one. I make the second sentence uh, goal two foster closer working relationships with police, fire, and citizens. That's a different goal, right? You pull that out. And then number three, uh, under this rubric of safety and accessibility is uh, reviewing disaster response protocols, right? So when you, when you pull them apart that way, you, you could see more clearly what we mean by public safety and accessibility. The way they're written there, they're kind of all jumbled together. I, I would say we break them out. If you want a purpose statement, we can write something that's overarching. You know, council met on such and such a date, considered uh, yeah. present future needs, it identified three areas, this one, right. this one, this one, and I kindly see the detail in, in you know, succeeding sheets, boom. But this needs to be cleaned up, because that's really three different pieces, yeah. there, right? Okay. It was, yeah, it's rough. Uh, it's a rough draft. Um, it's good work. I'm not being critical. I'm just trying to end up with a document that will drive us forward. Um, right. And, well, it, some of these are also objectives, right? To foster a closer working relationship. So, if they're not already an objective, they're written as if they could per, be. But per Bill's point, I'm sorry, Mark. Were you going to? Let me just make this final point. If, if you fracture 
the opening <laughs> paragraph, and you, you, you logically put together the safety things, right, um, such as uh, the streetscape and the ADA compliant, then you have fewer goals and objectives going. It, it makes it easier to see, which I think was Bill's point. Then you don't have 25 objectives. Those three things drive three or four objectives. That's what that piece is about. Then you have police, fire, and citizens. That's a different, okay? You have, probably have a couple of objectives there. And then lastly, you have disaster protocols, disaster management, and that drives... So when you lay it out, that for me, in my, in my head, that, that makes more sense. Okay, so the objectives should read like tasks, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Tasks to be accomplished. Correct. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, I was just going to say that um, I thought that work was already in this document. I, so I thought in January the goal was drafted. And in my opinion, the very first sentence is the purpose statement uh, from the goal. And then the objectives already tie back to the talking points under the goals that were discussed in January. So I thought today we would be like, okay, objective one, how do we create a closer relationship? Well, the first task is we got to get a new police chief on board. And, and that's going to happen in this budget year, right? So this budget year, new police chief on board, right? So that's, that's a success factor for the first objective so forth and so on. I mean, I, I think the objectives already tie back to the goal statement with the only exception that I found when I reviewed this is we kind of dropped the ADA compliance mm -hmm. <laughs> goal uh, from the objectives. Uh, you know, there I can't find those anywhere in the objectives unless we want to tie them into the objective 1.2, uh, looking at crosswalks, you know. And then, so for example, 1.2, you know, it shouldn't just rely on town management and the police chief to do a traffic study. I'm sure the DOT will jump in here, especially for Oak Island Drive, and, and support that and help with that, right? So maybe that's another, you know, indicator is establishing contact with the NCDOT and engaging them on some sort of traffic study or crosswalk discussion, because that's kind of missing. So I thought today we were going to go deeper into these objectives and drive out some of the task level work. Mm -hmm. And then to the mayor's point, are these tasks that we can accomplish in the in this current year versus next year versus the year after that, right? Yes. That's what I thought we were doing. So, we could, we, you know, that makes sense too. That's another way to approach it, right? So if you took the first sentence, right, and that appeared underneath public safety and accessibility, you don't need a purpose statement, and you've already said what you're doing, right? right? And then take the goals, which are related to streetscape and ADA compliance, and that's, you know, objective one and two, and so on. And then the police fire relationship, that's objective 2.1, and so on, you know, and actually, probably most of it's laid out here. I'm just trying to clean up the first paragraph, that's all. And your suggestion works for me. I don't need a purpose then, because underneath Public safety and accessibility is the first statement. This is what we're doing. Right? Economy of verbiage here is helpful, right? I agree. Yeah. Right? I agree. Yeah. And, yes. and so I, the, the other thing that I was attempting to do is to simplify some of the um, statements that have multiple things in them. Um, goal statements are usually simple, one sentence. Well, let's follow Mark's lead. So if you move that sentence up to ensure pedestrian safety in town and to provide access to public amenities, just put that, lift that out of that box and put it underneath public safety and accessibility. Then you can delete purpose. You don't need a purpose statement. It's clearly stated there. Okay. So now, Mark, I think you want to go to objective 1-1, one, one, right? So, so you yeah. want to go? Okay. Fair enough. And I believe this is where it would be important is to have town staff input <clears throat> as well. Because we can sit here and say, let's hire the new police chief before the end of this fiscal year. But town staff may say, well, here's our roadmap to get there, mm -hmm. right? And it's going to, our goal is to achieve that, right? And then we may suggest that we have some sort of outreach program established. But staff may come back and say, well, we laid the framework for that 
a year ago, or maybe we didn't, I don't know. And then, you know, this is what we believe it would take based on our available resources to put together an outreach program. But clearly the new police chief would, we would need that position in place because we would want that individual to provide input into an outreach program. Fair enough, and that position is going to be filled within the next couple of hours. Well, it's already filled, an offer's been made and... But I got your point. Um, I think what we wanna do here is provide... What we wanna do here is provide guidelines that give the administration flexibility and at the same time make the administration accountable. So develop an outreach program by such and such a date, components to include X, Y, and Z and others as, that's what we need here. Right? Yes. Okay. That is correct. Well, we're in, in agreement. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> what next could possibly come of this? So let's put police chief higher. That, that's perhaps I should have sat beside you today. But. Uh, that's actually that because that's already done and it's in this fiscal year. It's an it becomes an assumption because it's we're we're planning for FY twenty two twenty three, which starts July one. Correct. Yeah, but let's let's claim credit here. You know, uh, because when we formulated this, we didn't have a police chief. We're now about to have one in whatever it is, a month, whatever the transition period is. So go ahead, how do you want to word that? Hire police chief by? Uh, I would just say within this current fiscal year. Okay. Right. It, That's let's, let's assume for a moment that this is still January and we did not have the information that's, that's fair. coming available to us in a matter of minutes. So uh, let's just say that within this current fiscal year, our plan. I got it, Councilor. Move on. I just wrote it down. Good. All right. Good. All right. Outreach programs, programs plural. Are they each going to have one or is it combined? I think it should be <clears throat> combined, okay. in my opinion. I mean, that would be okay. my so input. So, an outreach program to be developed, right? And at this point, the police chief's not on the ground yet. So mm -hmm. you've got to give him some time. Um, April, May, by June? June of? 22. Well, again, this is fiscal year 22, 23. Well, and what are the characteristics of an outreach program? We're going to do that, that would, next. But right, because that would help us decide a timeline as right. well. Well, let's stop for a minute. Okay. Would you not agree? So if you say develop and implement an outreach plan. Well, I would, I would put a date in there and then say uh, the outreach plan should include the following minimum components. And then give, give them flexibility right. on the back side. But then I would ask the question of staff mm -hmm. is, are there any anticipated expenses for an outreach program? I mean, outreach programs can be free or they can have some expenses tied to them depending on where you want to take it, right? Is the outreach program going to include flyers or pamphlets or brochures? Is it going to require uh, meetings? Um, that may require use of facilities? Is it gonna require um, some sort of community officer resource that may or may not be available today on staff or maybe becomes the role of uh, the assistant chief? I mean, th there's lots of complex data elements to defining an outreach program. We can, like I said, we can put one together that's free or we can put one together that's gonna require a little bit of budget to help it along. So in that regards, we're getting ready to come upon budget season, right? So if we wanna put the plan in place this fiscal year with new resources coming on board and then execute or implement the plan in the next fiscal year, then we need to know if we need expenses set aside to cover that outreach program or are we gonna to try to do year one for free? Well. Here's a suggestion. So you've got a new employee. So you give him three months to get it, his feet wet, right? To learn the community, 
to get a feel for the culture, to learn his, the strengths and weaknesses of his staff, and to set his, uh, his own agenda and expectations for how he's going to run his, his uh, department. Well, you know, stepping back, I think both of you are raising good points. So you could pin this in August or September. Yeah, I think so. Because ideally, you'd want police, fire, and EMS to plan it jointly, right? As opposed to having three separate outreach programs. So I think we should set a date that's reasonable to give the new chief enough time to get on the ground and really look at it. We should also, I still say, we should give them some general components, what we want. And we should probably, you're right, Mark, we need a plug number here because there'll be some cost, even if we use our own facilities and even if, well, obviously, we'll use our own personnel, but there'll be a flyer or a pin or something, that, a pen, you know, something that they'll want to give out to the citizens. Well, me sitting here listening to your directions. And um, this is why I keep pointing <coughs> yeah, this I know, side I'll, of the room. I'm just waiting for that to finish. Um, <laughs> What you're doing now is for a 22-23 budget. Right. So the directions we would have to be would be starting something in a 22-23 budget. Um, we wouldn't have time to, with the everything is getting ready to go on and the tourist season starting to have something to you by June 30th for you to try to adopt, for us to try to implement and try to succeed in it. It will fail. It's setting it up for failure. We would rather, what we're discussing today, to keep in mind this is for next year. Um, we're not trying to tie anything down where we can try to complete something in the next three or four months. Um, but looking at that, even when you start July 1st, we know what July 1st is, is town celebration day. We got everything going through July. You have everything August, tourists are still here, four extra 40,000 people, and then things start to slow down. So I would say that it would take time to, to start that. Uh, they could start looking at things, but I'd say the process or to bring council or one or two of you back into that um, group to sit there and look at those kind of things and to assist with that. But I believe we need one of y'all at the table while we're discussing this between all three groups as well um, to put something off where in the first quarter it would be under review or draft or not even really draft it, just be a paperwork started. And then the second quarter is when that would start to hopefully have something when you go into your retreat the next year that would where you would be ready to adopt something or bring something for adoption. Excellent point. So let's put that down on there. Or did you already do that? First quarter? Well, and by the quarter. end of first quarter would be the end of September. Is that too soon? I'd say at that point, we wouldn't have... A draft? They should have the components put together right. or a sort of a outline of how they would like to incorporate input from each group um, as citizens as well. And then to be able to put something on the final draft, I'd say we bring it back in the second quarter and then the adoption of it at the um, January retreat or January meeting, or if it's something that's earlier, it'd be earlier. So here's how you might think about it. So the first one is simply to develop the plan, right? Yeah, I, I think. And, and then your success <clears throat> indicators, you can either put it as part of that objective, what you what you want, or, you know, you can put as a success indicator, the plan will include these things. Um, draft submitted to council by such and such a date. Uh, it involved council and, and community input, whatever those indicators of success would be and it's ready for adoption in I, I would say success retreat. for me success indicator would be review the plan at the January 2023 retreat and implement the plan in that same fiscal year prior to uh, peak season starting so we would set some goal of mm -hmm. implementing an outreach program <clears throat> around say April of 2023, right? The the last quarter of our fiscal year, you know, could be reasonable, I would think. That we, because if we review the plan in January, we'll probably have some iterations 
and then if we our goal is to implement it in April, I, I think that would work. So, okay, I'm framing it this way then. So, David makes a good point about the the daily concerns that they're going to be looking at. So, the end of the first quarter would be what, David? The end of an outline. End of September. Yeah. Yeah. So the rough a rough draft is created of the plan, final draft or something is produced, then submitted to us in January for council approval, executed April, May? You, you want April. it before tourist season, right? Yeah, yes. so April, April, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would say end of September have the components identified, right? And then in that second quarter from October through December, get that draft of the plan we need on a, paper using the components that you identified in the first quarter right. and then right we would review it in January make okay. some make some iterative changes and then implement in April so I think one of the things that we should require is a product right it's not just a, a fancy list of things so I would like to see us develop an online presentation which we can push out to the entire community which resides on our website that's work somebody needs to, to do that I think they reasonably want to have some kind of a physical product at these meetings whether it's a pamphlet right and I think probably um, we want to have coffee to keep people awake as we go through <laughs> through arts. So we need a budget number. Um, and I would argue, uh, Mark, that by, by inserting that, it ensures that we're going to get something that will be longer lasting, right? Because whatever this safety um, presentation is, whether it's a motor vehicle or whether it's pedestrian or whether it's beach safety or whether it's home safety, it resides on our website. I, I, I would argue that if we can, we'd push it out to every, every web link we have in our directory, right? And then there's a physical meeting, right? right. Um, yeah, and I would, um, I mean, I greatly appreciate jumping into trying to identify some of those components um, that need to be addressed, whether it's online or in person, but I'd also like to hopefully hear from the new police chief in, in coordination with the current fire chief on their past experiences with outreach programs. They sure. may bring something to the table that has worked well in other communities, and I'd, I'd love the opportunity to hear that input. Well, I think you, if you and I want to volunteer, we can join that committee when it's formed. Yeah, so I mean, one of the things I would ask is in a slightly different way uh, is what, based on their experiences and based on their research, what are the best practices for community outreach in public safety. So by the time we join the committee, they already have that research, right? And we can say, okay, uh, gee whiz, that, you know, uh, an FAQ on fire safety really works well. Well, that well, doesn't, you know, that doesn't work, but a video is more powerful. Right. And uh, not to overstep, and I appreciate the nomination from Mr. Bach to include me in on that. I don't want to, uh, erase Mr. Blaylock here to my left. He was involved in January in the discussion with you, so I'd like to, to, to give him the opportunity to volunteer his input before I overstep my boundaries and, and assume some work there. Well, so. I don't want to overstep any boundaries either. My point, by way of illustration, not necessarily a selection, was it's helpful on something like this where we're going out to the public uh, to have at least one council member, if not two, there, because this is political in a sense, right? We're, we're, and it, it's also informative. It's both. And so we want to make sure that it touches the public in the appropriate way. That's all. Yeah. And that's a valid point, because we heard from the voters last year that they wanted to see a more visible and active, you know, council. So... I, I agree. We need to be in the forefront of this effort, um, showing a collaboration with town staff. So, we right. wanted to see a more active police force too, handing out 
We're getting, getting there. Enforcing our laws. That came up repeatedly in the interviews. And so that's why I'm saying one or several of us should be there because that's an issue that the police are going to have to address. Right? I'm assuming that the, um, that the council is in partnership in, in this, and, and accountability resides collectively across the board. So I, what I don't want to do is create a situation where we're pushing added mandates meeting today. on the town staff, which already have full plates. And I think a number of these are going to require the support of council either working behind the scenes or actively working with the staff, uh, if nothing else, to support them in, in accomplishing this and ensuring that it's going to meet our expectations. So um, that's how I think about it. So see if this represents what you all talked about. So an outline that would uh, include um, a basic approach, define a basic approach and effective, based on effective practices for outreach programs by end of September, um, a solid draft submitted to council in January for the retreat, safety presentation, um, be it website or what else, in February, uh, and then implement the program in April before we get inundated. So we talked about this in January of 21, and we're going to implement it in April of 20. Well, we're talking, but yeah, but the agenda, keep in mind, this is FY22-23 priorities. So we're talking about that now because we're getting ready to approach the budget process. So this is in, so that we can budget, and the budget is 22-23. So we can't do, this year's has already been established, by the previous council. Does that make sense? I hear what you're saying. So rather than, than us off the top of our head trying to do it today, David and Dave can flag this as a budget item that we need to consider in this budget session that's coming up, right? So what should we allocate for outreach? So we can just move on to the next objective because I could pick a number, but I don't know if it's realistic. Fair enough. Okay. I mean, it could be zero if everything is online. It could be. Um, I, I, again, just personally, I think that if you're going to bring 40 or 50 people to a firehouse or town hall, you want something physical to put in their hands. And what we don't want is a long PowerPoint. <laughs> something snappy that's a video probably would be... And some graphs. We'll make sure we have plenty of graphs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. <laughs> Please. Whatever you want. Um, the money that the chief of police is going to have to work with for this year, he already has it, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So when he comes on board, he will be able to implement or expand, contract, whatever, programs such as Stranger Danger, as an example. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and then he would prepare a plan for, he would look at what he has, prepare a plan, and then submit that for the 23 budget? Is that correct? Is, is doing the same thing we've been doing. Okay. Well, he's going to, you know, I mean, it's, it's not, as you as you both mentioned, it's you're getting ready to make a decision about a department that doesn't have it. You know, he needs to be on board. But he, he can, like you said, I don't know who said it, somebody said he may have a better idea. He may. He may come up with something totally different. He may decide that he wants a community resource officer. There's a brilliant idea. And There you go. <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, he has contacts, as you, as we all do, uh, mentioning the DOT, for example. I mean, you know, you're going to get, you get a lot further with, if you want, under public safety, if you want crosswalks, 
stuff like that if you could make a phone call to someone you know and possibly be more efficient doing it that way or along with the mm -hmm. formal request yes. but i think um i think i got i understand it now so i think we're all right as so far as look, i'm concerned because when we look at this just like you said the ad compliant part and the whole once we bring dot in to look at things as well uh, at different objectives i mean you're also bringing in public work stormwater everybody's coming in because they all have something tied to that right. so um but it would be concentrated in one budget point okay um, i just want to make sure i understand thank you well and i know just to i hate to drag this last objective out even further but um i know we specifically called out in january our own fire chief and our own police chief however uh, what Charlie's comments made me think of as well is um, perhaps including uh, in the conversation the county resources. Like, for example, uh, if the new police chief thinks, you know, a DARE program would benefit our community, well, what is Brunswick County doing with DARE? Or are they going to revisit that? Or what have they done in the past? Because they may partner with us to do a countywide program that we would still implement locally, but it may be something that could benefit the county in general. So hopefully we don't constrict our new resources to only look at Oak Island, but think bigger picture, because we are a part of Brunswick County. Yeah, yeah, I got the Sheriff's Department and EMS down, because um, we're getting ready to bring an ambulance service back to uh, Fire Station 3. Um, so they'll be in there as soon as we get the contract agreed upon. Um, we'll have an ambulance running out of a uh, fire station number three again. Excellent. Yeah, I think about water rescue right here in town that does or does not work with our fire department, police department, or if we involve them in this. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good point. And I think what we're, without being, the challenge here is to set the goals without being prescriptive, to, to be able to give the police chief, the fire chief, et cetera, the ability to look at the broader community, including the county. You know, what resources are there? What do they bring to the table? And that's what we'll begin to see in September, um, how they're thinking and shaping that. And then they've got uh, a whole quarter to build that plan out. Uh, as a substantive draft for us to consider at our January retreat. It'd be nice to have it before that meeting so that we're not trying to read it and absorb it all at once, um, but can certainly react to it there. Why don't you set a submission date slightly in advance of the retreat so that we actually have it and we get a chance to look at it? I agree with Charlie. I don't, I don't want to constrain them. Best practice covers a lot of ground, and they can decide what best practice is. I also agree with Bill that you would have to have water safety, or at least give them the opportunity to be to part of it, right? Yeah. Here's my, my last thought on this. Um, if this program, whatever it is, when it emerges, is successful, which I hope it is, then we might want to think about continuing to budget going forward for outreach, not just for police, fire, EMS, but other departments, and we could combine them to save money, right? So we then are in the, in the position of saying, outreach is important. It's, it's what we do for citizens. It's how we explain how they're served, you know? So this may be the beginning of something much longer running if it works. And uh, I think it's a great opportunity for for us to connect, as Mark was saying, to connect with citizens, right? And it'll be a golden opportunity for the new police chief because he's not known. Right. Well, we may not have, you know, we might want a uh, resource officer. Yeah, I'm but, just saying as, a, as, an, as an example. But it would. But it's be his, you know, he has to present it to us. Yes. And justify why he wants it. But he's got to get in here first. And but now you're talking next budget year. Yeah, yeah, but I, yeah, I know. Not this budget year. I, I yeah. know, but yeah. But he, that's an example of how we would continue to build on the program. Exactly. To expand outreach. So he has to work off of the money he has now, and then wait till the next 
if he's going to expand or increase, you know, decrease, increase the type of programs he's going to be using, then the next time around, that's when he comes forward with a new budget and says, we need to add a DARE program, we need to do this, we need to do that. But he does need, as both of you have said, he does need time to learn about the community. I mean, he he's, the demographics are, are I mean, you know, where he came from, the crime rate may be one thing, while here it's, and the, the whole thing is just, he needs time, basically, just to make it short and sweet, he needs time. And hopefully he'll be searching and hiring staff, et cetera, so, right, you know, right. building his. Um, so this, so what we're working on here is, is, is predicated upon his input. Absolutely. So. Yeah, no, that's why we're not being prescriptive and leaving it generally. Uh, if there's no other comments for objective 1.1 and in the respect of the time we have remaining, I say we can just copy and paste 1.1 uh, down to 1.2 and maybe mark out the website. But I, I see the same thing there. Uh, you know, the staff with working with the new police chief and maybe NCDOT need to develop, you know, the, the outline, come up with a plan, right, in conjunction with what NCDOT recommends uh, and follow the same timeline. This should be another retreat item that we're reviewing um, in 2023 around identifying crosswalks, where are they going to go, what's the shared cost, if any, in those. I would probably add, though, that we may want to include our parks and recreation resources because I don't want to just put a crosswalk in and say we did it. I want I want them to have a meaning, right? They need to be addressing pedestrian safety, but they also need to address connecting the community. These crosswalks should be strategically identified that connect amenities or connect people uh, while addressing safety. So I think our parks and rec resources should come into play for 1.2 as a you know, not necessarily they get to pick, but they should have input. Gotcha. So streetscape plan, is that something you want to keep in this budget year? Well, I'd like to ask a question, um, David. Um, Wes is on retainer for his services to us for how long? Um, January 31st. <laughs> We've continued him through, yes. So we're getting ready to do a, you're getting ready to see a budget order amendment to carry him to the, June the, re 30th. the reason I ask is he seems very competent, very yes. knowledgeable, and uh, accomplishing a streetscape plan is a big undertaking here, especially the way it's framed out. If Wes is available to you, right, mm -hmm. it will make your collective task a lot easier, that's all. Yeah, we can talk to the COG, too, and see what their participation could be as well. Because th they may have a, a different resource, and if we had Wes working on a UDO audit and a rewrite, he'll be booked in addition to what else we need him for. So that will be the hourly work that he does for us, plus um, if we decide to contract with uh, the COG for Wes's services for the UDO. PBD, I'm, I'm just trying to make certain we have the bandwidth to get these things done. That's exactly. All. Right. I think we should also include um, the Cape Fear RPO group, Patrick Flanagan. Gotcha. <laughs> For the Greenway? Working with you today. Well, they may have uh, input from a comprehensive transportation plan right. on things like dimensional uh, aspects of the streetscape, right? You just can't assume that the public right-of-way from a state-maintained road is 100% available to us for design and implementing 
a streetscape. So they may have some guidance around um, the comprehensive transportation plan that would help us um, with some of the design elements of a streetscape. Um, for example, the, the one topic that Mr. Kelly and I continue to come back on, which is um, the fact that many of our businesses depend on parking in front of their facilities, which happen to be directly off of the main Oak Island Drive. Requiring um, them to back out. Right, and so that is a huge safety concern. Um, and so I think, you know, maybe the uh, transportation people could have some input into that. I keep pressuring us to look at the back alleys and to make improvements there. Uh, Mr. Kelly mentioned the other night, maybe those become one way. Uh, can we expand those and include parallel parking behind buildings, uh, things like that. So we need a lot of creative input as we move forward in this direction. So I see all of that connected to objective 1.2. Um, Possibly. Well, that's where we're talking about traffic safety and I would think parking would be a part of that well I see objective 1.3 as the focal point of that would be incorporating um, a, a true streetscape plan which isn't just about roads and sidewalks it's about the whole aesthetic exactly. of lighting for safety reasons and aesthetics like you know local artists or how, how do we, you know, create this, you know, uh, attractive downtown area to help promote local businesses, but at the same time guide tourism to key destinations or attractions, right? Things like that. So it's, it's a bigger picture than just sidewalks and back alleys. It's, it, it is a, uh, to say a, a true streetscape so I would suggest this become a goal for next year because it's got a lot in it it does and you don't want to um, not be able to give it the attention it deserves and it may well um, require more bandwidth both financially and people wise than we're able to give it if we could address the safety needs, um, I think we've done a pretty good job on this because we have two other priorities to I, I have no objection subject to what my colleagues think. What do y'all think? In deferring it forward, but I'll just say this. It, if you go into our land use plan, it, there are three or four priority recommendations about the improvement of the downtown business area, both aesthetically safety-wise and so on. And if you look at the last public survey that we did, which was in 17, right after the beach came improving the appearance of downtown. So this has been a long, my point is, it's a long-standing. Excuse me. It's a long-standing priority and we've kicked this can down the road a lot. So if we're gonna get serious next year, yeah, we need to budget for the bandwidth, we need to do the study and do it correctly, and then you've got all of the interface with these business owners, right, who are going to have a lot at stake in an altered streetscape. Sure. You're going to have to word it in terms that people understand. So what's a streetscape? When you get ready to sell this idea, I mean, it's like me trying to find out where the dump was, and they called it a convenience site. You've got to speak in the language of the citizens. Well, And that's a streetscape is a nice word, but you're going to have to, that one of the priorities should be to have an explanation that you can share with, you know, because I, I know that's what I'm going to get from people with, okay, Charlie, that sounds great, but what the hell is a streetscape? Well, in the, in the land use plan, which is now a bit dated, right, it's all, almost five years old, uh, the original consultant, Mr. Holland, provided a series of visual illustrations of what the streetscape would look like. Basically better parking, signage that's attractive, um, um, vegetative breaks, 
crosswalks, you know, so you can go through, we'd have to update those, but essentially, yeah, he created pictures of what it might look like using other towns or altering, you know, with Photoshop, our town. Right. So yeah, we would need that, you're right. So, and that's, so I'm glad you pointed that out because perhaps in fiscal year coming up, the action item is to revisit those renderings and that plan and maybe refresh it and not just refresh it, start socializing it with the community. So maybe that's our action for this upcoming fiscal Great year idea. is to do a refresh and engage the community and business owners by, by socializing that. Then in fiscal year 23, 24, we start identifying any funding that we may need to bring forward because I think the other effort we can do in the upcoming fiscal year is start identifying, well, how would this even get funded? Let's refresh the renderings and let's socialize it with the community and the business district. But then let's also start talking strategically about funding, various funding options. And then we can be ready to try to do something in fiscal year 23, 24. Uh, so that way we're not just kicking the can down the road. We actually show the community that we're going to take action now. We are now prepared to, to do something with this effort that was done well, years ago. In essence, we float the idea. Right. It, it will need to be more than refreshed because it's dated. Um, part of what we can do, and I think Holland probably had, if I'm trying to remember now, it's a while ago, 10 or 15 slides saying this is what it would potentially look like. And he had um, altered some of our streetscape digitally, but he also had best practice examples. So here, you know, here's Greenville. You know, here, here's Ashland. This is what you know a downtown could look like. So that's what we need because Charlie's right. Uh, when you throw out a term like streetscape, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Is it banners? Is it new to, is it fancy lighting? Is it bigger sidewalks? Well, it's it's a lot of things, and sure. it, it's this commitment to the aesthetics of, of downtown, which will be real work, because you know we're used to doing our own thing. Right. And what can I be required to do? Really, the issue will be, and I'm just gonna end here, because I think you're, you're alluding to it, but I'll just put it on the record. The only way to do that is to find grant funding, match it to our funding, and provide an incentive to the business owner to say, would you mind painting or, you know, whatever it is that we think the streetscape should look like, you're going to have to incentivize them. They're not just going to do it because they like you. We're right. going to have to provide an incentive. And you, well, you've done it, so. You've got to sell it. So, so I would, I'm what I'm hearing is that we, well, number one, I would suggest that when we contract for um, an audit and rewrite of the UDO, that the landscape, I mean, the uh, land use plan be part of that because, as I understand it, uh, when there are questions about um, ordinances in the UDO, that one of the first things you do is you go to the land use plan to see what the intent is. So these two things have to be integrated. So it won't make sense to have a new set of ordinances that don't comport to the land use plan. Well, and the simple way to do this, you know, think Occam's razor here. In the back of the land use plan that was developed and adopted by council and that the planning board used to write the UDO, there are, um, I think there were 80 recommendations but they were ranked high, medium, and low. So that would be a place to start because what happens with these reports is they get filed. I, mean, we, I dare say that if we go through and pull out all the high recommendations, we've only addressed one or two of them. Right? So that, to me, would, having been on the land use plan and labored over that for 18 months, that didn't get the, the, it didn't have the impact because there were too many recommendations. Frankly, I'm sure council, I wasn't on council, and they got it. Well, holy cow, there's 85 things we got to do. But really, there are 10 or 15, and there are several about 
streetscape or, or downtown aesthetics or however, what, whatever term you want to use that consistently came up as you, you need to do something with this. So, so I'm suggesting two things, actually. Yeah, okay. So as part of the audit and rewrite of the UDO, we should also update our land use plan so that they comport. Now set that aside. That's, that's, not that's a, a big project. I'm saying at a minimum, go back and find the high re recommendations and take a look at them. So Land use plan is pretty complicated. There's a lot of stuff in there. No, but they need to go together is what I'm saying. And okay. it's dated, as you pointed out. Now, that's a sidebar. It, as it relates to this, I think we're talking about changing the verb. So we revisit and further explore um, the development of a streetscape plan per you know, incorporating the recommendations in the 2017 land use plan. So um, that begins to lay the groundwork and that shouldn't, uh, that shouldn't have any money attached to it. That's just elbow grease. That's just manpower. So we can revise this to change the verb so that it can be accomplished in this in the 22-23 fiscal year understanding that we're setting up actual work to be done in the following fiscal year does that make sense it does it does i mean one of the things i hope we can talk about later today um, you know the going forward in the visionary stuff i like that i, I think that we need you know if we, as we sit here today 23 to 28 is going to be an extraordinary period if the economy holds and all of these mainland developments come online, uh, there, there are so many things that we're going to need to think about, starting with economic development, one of my favorite themes, but also infrastructure. And uh, downtown has been identified for a long time. You know, it's something that we need to do. It, it, you know, I'm not gonna, pretending it's painless, it, it, but and we probably need to do it in stages, right? And there's a whole acquiring the funding to do it kind of thing. So uh, hopefully this afternoon when we get there, this, this goal will carry over. This is something that we're, we're going to do by 2028. We can give ourselves five years to get it done. Well, but, so, some of you will be getting it done. Yeah. yeah. Our terms are only four years, Mr. Bach. So uh, yes, ho hopefully I'm, we'll I'm, still be here in 2028. But. <laughs> well, I'm well aware of how, how long the term runs. <laughs> Um, two, I have two final comments on this topic, uh, and then if we're ready to move on or if we'd like to hear from other members. Uh, first comment is, I think it's important that if staff is going to bring to us in this budget cycle uh, additional sidewalk improvements for next fiscal year, I know we've got some in the budget this year that have already started, but I'd like to understand, are there plans in the upcoming fiscal year for additional sidewalk uh, improvements or construction and if so we need to start actually promoting this effort around sidewalks as part of this streetscape overall planning effort so we can communicate to the community that you know while this may not be a formal streetscape plan we are putting forward efforts to make sidewalk improvements in the community especially around the, the downtown business district, if, if that's where we've been heading. Uh, and staff hopefully will update us um, as we go into the budget cycle. The last comment is, and this will be the only time you hear me say I'm in favor of taxes. And that is because we could consider a special sales tax district. It has been done before in downtown business districts where you basically draw a box around a certain territory, if you want to call it that, or jurisdiction, and you can assess a special sales tax. And I want to make sure everyone clearly understands what I'm saying when I say sales tax, I'm not talking property tax or any other tax. This is the one tax I do favor. So it could be a quarter of a percentage or a half a percent or even a 1%, whatever the number is. You just add another sales tax to the transaction that is predominantly tourism. They buy T-shirts and 
tumblers and beach chairs and beach umbrellas. So those items coming out of that business district would carry an additional tax item. And then that money could be designated toward funding street revitalization. Initiatives. Right, yeah. exactly. You, you can't use that sales tax for anything you want to. You have to use it in that district that you've defined. And it can go toward things like revitalization, beautification, those kind of items. Stop the presses. First of all, do we get that on the record? It's recorded. Okay, good. This is good. <laughs> so, do we, hold on, do we need legislative approval? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, something Great we idea. before. Yeah, definitely. We finally found a tax you like. This is good. This is good. So, all right. So, if we rewrite this without being too specific, if we rewrite this such as we revisit and further explore, um, uh, the uh, priorities in the land use plan relative to streetscape with the idea that we generate a report and an approach to creating a plan that would be delivered by December 31st so that we have it in time for the January retreat. Does that, mm -hmm. would that work? Does that satisfy you? Phil? It's gonna be a lot of work. Seems like it everything is. we did January was you didn't have yourself to the businesses. Doing today uh, in a different form yeah. way and undoing everything we did January. Yeah, that will work, but. Just well, but are you okay with that? Not really. Okay. Uh, Help me. Speak, Counselor. In January, we put out 15 ideas that people wanted to kick around. After we all kicked them around and discussed them, we came up with three things we wanted to accomplish in 2022. And now it seems like the three things we wanted to accomplish in 2022, we're going to somehow or another justify working on that in 2023, 24, and 25. What are we going to accomplish in 2023? So... Until June 30, as I understand it, David, help me here. Um, we are actually still implementing the priorities of the previous council. But that have already been budgeted. So, so we we're went, spending... We went through five hours on, in January and came up with three, I understand. With three things. Uh, to be implemented in FY... That's the whole idea. This is a, like a leveling exercise today to make sure that the things that we drafted in January can actually be done in FY 22, 23. Otherwise, we're setting ourselves up for failure, and uh, especially relative to being accountable. So these are things that, if they need to be budgeted, we need to know about that now before we start the budget process. So we're still in FY 22, 23. Um, so, you know, maybe there's a misunderstanding about, um, how this works, but that was my operating assumption. Um, help me. So, Bill, <laughs> um, we, we haven't done it like this in a while. And so what we're doing, basically what you're looking at right now is planning kind of things for the years. The physical things we haven't gotten into. Um, and yes, there is physical things that we need to get done in 22, 23. We need to get them, get them done. That was discussed earlier in your 15 um, items and many more. Um, and out of those 15, we all agreed and patted ourselves on the back that day in January. We've come up, we didn't come up with everything we wanted, but we came up with three things that we can get done in 22. Uh, and I came here this morning with the apprehension that Pretty language will probably undo the three things we agreed on in January. And I'm just still fearful that we're heading that direction. Well, on the sidewalk issue that um, Councilman Martin brought up a minute ago, the, the town last year did a two-phase project in the commercial corridor. Um, we had no idea it was going to take this long to get DOT and everybody together. Now, stormwater issues, they, they're still working out that because we thought we had it straightened out, but now they're they're addressing their stormwater issues. Uh, so we're trying to go ahead and get them to look at phase two now while they're looking at phase one. They knew we were doing a phase project as well. 
So we put in money this year for the sidewalks and the sidewalks for phase two are laid out as well. So that'll go right into next year's if, count, if you approve to spend that money. Um, so those kind of things were established last year that we are carrying, it's a two year project. Uh, the rec center was looked at uh, as a two year project last year. Uh, this year, uh, when we get to it here in a few minutes, uh, or when we get to our part, we'll tell you what the conceptual drawing and everything that was done two years ago and bring that forward to let you see that. So that's something you will be physically doing. Um, but the things that are they're looking at now are non-physical. I know that. And um, when, they, when we start talking about those things, they do have physical attachments to it, but it's not the nuts and bolts. We haven't looked at any kind of nuts and bolts yet today. <laughs> and, and we will get to that during our part because on the three-year plan, we have to look at physical activities. Um, but to know the physical activities, we do have to go through a process to know how we're gonna lay things out over three years. So when we, or when the council looked at the retreat and said, this is what we're doing, uh, just consider beach. Um, the beach we know is not this year either, uh, or next year. There is projects that we have, the Wilmington Harbor project will be coming up, Lockwood Folly project will be coming up, and then you have the nourishment project. So those are things that are in the future that we're gonna to have to plan for now. Um, but again, the nuts and bolts for physical activities are in the budget and the line item things that we need to address. And that's, those are the items that you basically brought up that we need to make sure is implemented. I think that's fair. I mean, planning is an exercise that gives direction to the ultimate action we take. It can be frustrating. I mean, just to be fair to you, Bill, right? Formulate a plan. That's explore options. So none of these things were gonna hit the ground physically, but they all are important. And actually greenways and streetscapes are multi-year projects. What we're doing is saying, we think these are important and we're gonna to begin to look at them, develop a plan, then ultimately we'll have to vote to decide to fund the plan. So this first goal, other than you know, conduct a, a public meeting, is all stuff about formulate, explore, consider. There isn't, we're not putting any buildings up with this. Yeah, I just don't wanna undo what we did in January. Well, I'm not trying to undo any of it. I'm trying to find the right language that I'm with you that get holds us accountable. Something that is actually realistic and doable in FY 22, 23. Well, all of these require management to come back with a plan, right? So that's the physic. That's what's going to be the deliverable. Right. We're not going to build any greenways, right? But we're going to have a plan to do so. We're not going to build a streetscape, but we're going to have a we're going to plan. Just, we're like going to show what it looks like, right. for Charlie's point. Yeah. So to that, right, to that point, just like I suggested we copy and paste 1.1 1 .1 to 1.2, I believe now we can copy and paste 1.3 down to 1.4. Mm -hmm. But again, the substitution for 1.4 would be let's bring parks and recreation resources into the conversation. Sure. Right? So a very similar... Uh, methodology that we just went through with 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2, I think we can apply to 1.3 and 1.4. Mm -hmm. It's it's copy and paste, introduce parks and recreation. Yeah, look at the next goal, Bill. Yeah, It's conduct a study, again. Um, it takes, I think you'll be happier when we get into the actual budget because there are physical things that are, are gonna be there. Yeah. Fire trucks and what else? fire equipment, and so on and so forth. Lots of fire equipment. So on this, if we have a plan by December 31st, is that good? So we have it for next year's retreat. It, it would be nice, Madam Mayor, just thinking about efficiency for our group, that if we have the plans, such as they may be, in advance of the retreat, uh, we can come in and make decisions. We don't have to sit there and read them. And, but this is, right? So the more time you give us to study, the better the students will be. Kind of. Exactly. And a lot of this is going to be one thing with a bunch of, an umbrella with the, all these little items underneath it. So we can address things as we go, so. Right. So we don't have, uh, 
Are we talking about reviewing and updating the disaster plan? Um, staff has done their review and uh, modifications. Um, so for this year, for this year. So we will, we schedule a, a hurricane meeting um, and sort of a little mock run between some departments and those kind of things. Um, so when that comes up, we'll let you know uh, some you want to participate or anything like that or, or watch what we do. Um, and then uh, we can work with Mike, frequently ask questions. Usually we come up with a new uh, question and answer kind of thing to put online because during the year Mike gets questions put in or sent in about things. So that he tries to update with whatever the latest concerns are uh, by the public. Um, so we'll have that. Uh, for this year? Yeah. So the question is for 22-23. I mean, it's, it's the, all we do. We do it, this again? Yeah, every year we review the plan. Lisa sends it out um, October, November, right after the hurricane season. And then each department looks through it to see what needed to be updated or changed or did we sell this piece of equipment so we need to take it off or we cancel this vendor and we got a new vendor or those kind of things. And then here in the next month, we'll update the uh, vendor list, call out numbers and those kind of things to make sure we got all the latest information. But the plan basically has been, been run through ever since Charlie was here. Um, the island hasn't changed any and the same places are in the same place. So everything's pretty much laid out. It's just the uh, magnitude of the storm that changes things. Right. So can you share that with council? Yes. And um, when you do the, the tabletop, um, will that include all of the decision makers in that process? Is that something council should observe and be aware of what's happening in advance? Um, what's your suggestion? We usually run through the program ourselves uh, to see what we're missing or what we need to add. And then the finalized plan is something that we would send to council. So council doesn't watch the run through? They haven't before. If somebody wants to sit there for the day, they can, but they haven't before. So as a decision maker in that process, I would, I would want to be apprised so I know what's happening and how it's happening. We'll invite you to the next one. Thank you. I appreciate that. And anyone else that wants to participate? Well, before we leave this, <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, I have a comment as well, so go ahead. We need to, uh, how to put this in a politically correct way, but we need to review and clarify the procedure by which the mayor and the manager communicate with the rest of council the decision to be made on evacuation. Right. So there's, there's some confusion around that. We've had two mayors, I've experienced two mayors, and they did it two different ways. So um, that will be important, right? Um, Mayor one said, I'm contemplating X, Y, and Z. What do you think? Okay, well, that suggests I can give an opinion. Mayor two said, I've decided to do Y. Uh, to which my response then is, okay, that's your call. Now, I could work with it either way, but I think we should be clear on what you're going to, in fact, what you're going to do, Madam Mayor. If you're asking for an opinion, that's one thing. If you're saying, I've made this decision in conjunction with the emergency people, then my answer will always be, I support you fully. It's your call. But we need to be clear on that. I don't know if that's your question. That's my question. No, that was one of, on my list. I have an additional one. Uh, and my suggestion would be um, that we expand this topic to also include um, a plan around emergency response in general. I know this conversation is focused on hurricane disaster or flood disasters, but my question is, what is our plan for coordinating a multi-agency response to any emergency need for the town of Oak Island, especially since we no longer have dispatch available to us. So do we have a plan in place or do we need to have uh, new resources develop a plan that suggest in the event of a, an emergency response need, this is how we approach it? as a, as a multi-agency point of view. That would be my 
suggestion is that we expand this conversation beyond just a disaster plan, but an overall emergency response plan in general. Um, feedback I've heard from the community, right or wrong, is the community views our agencies as disconnected where they shouldn't be disconnected. And if the public believes that they're disconnected, then we're definitely doing something wrong. I personally don't believe there's that much disconnect. I think there is quite a bit of communication that goes on, but maybe if there's some sort of, you know, view or plan or communication that assures the community that we actually do have a coordinated effort in an emergency response situation, I think that would go a long way. Yeah, there is, I mean, all groups work together. Um, and it's laid out in the emergency plan that we have. Um, it doesn't matter if it was a hurricane or a flood or whatever it is, um, nuclear plant meltdown or whatever they are. Um, you just start going through the procedures that are involved within each department and they pick up the scenario that needs to be addressed. Um, so there is um, sort of a multi-layer thing in there. Uh, as far as the closing of the bridge, the way the policy is written was the first option that Councilman Bach brought up the way that it's been done in the past. Um, but it's up to the mayor, the mayor closes the bridge. Um, and that's the way the ordinance is written. So the mayor has that decision. If the mayor wants to call every council member and say, hey, how you feel? That's, that's up to the mayor. Or if the mayor says, hey, I'm closing the bridge, we're, we're closing the bridge. Um, but that is something that I believe each year we could sort of go through this and, and the mayor will address or should address how she's going to handle, not just on that situation, on any kind of situation. Um, if something comes up, um, stopping of the selling of uh, beer and wine, um, those kind of things, curfews. The, I mean, there's a whole scenario of things that happen during the storm or before or after an event that, um, you know, usually the mayor does address council for those considerations. Um, and we do work with the mayor the, the whole time. Um, we send out updates. Lisa sends out the updates. Uh, Mike takes over the social media pages so everybody's getting the same broadcast. Um, now that we've had him on board for the last year, everything is sort of simplified on that part. So everybody's getting the same information. Um, our goal is to get it to you prior to what we send out to the public. Uh, you already know what we're doing. Um, you'll get many a text and many an email during a storm because uh, we will notify you every time something happens. I think um, these last storms, you did a great job. So we'll, I mean, we'll let you... Every two or three hours, you sent something to me. I was we're going to let you know. I was thing, well informed. Things change. And I, I don't do Facebook. Um, not going to do Facebook. <laughs> uh, but um, those kind of things are done by other individuals to make sure that things are getting out there the way they need to be. Uh, we have conference calls set up. Um, we'll have three a day, four a day. Brunswick County has theirs. The mayor will get that call-in number. Uh, they don't like for, you know, us to give out the number because they get bombarded and the system shuts down. <laughs> so that, that's the worst thing that happens to us all the time. So um, we don't have an EOC, just like we've always known. Um, we have the meetings here. The police will come over. Fire usually stays in the fire station, but um, everybody's on the call. Everybody hears. They'll send me what they want to, you know, we get out. Our fire chief is the person who puts everything on the web EOC. Uh, fire chief goes down, then it goes to the police chief. Police chief goes down, it goes to sister fire chief. I mean, all those kind of things are laid out. Uh, and that's who is um, entering those kind of things for us. Uh, the mayor will speak for us at the county meetings. Uh, the other mayors will speak up as well for each town. They go around the room, but it's really around the phone. Um, and go through each township. And then we tell them what, our, what we're doing and what our needs are. Um, and our next phase, what we are going to do. So I think we've, we've all gone through it many a time, and it gets to be a routine to us. Um, so we probably don't get out all the information to the public that we could or should, uh, because it does become a routine to us. But we've all gone through them, many of them now, 30 years, so. But that is, I wrote down what you were talking about, so we can look at expanding that further. And then the mayor should address y'all during the, hur before hurricane season, on how she's wanting to how she's going to handle her actions. But per, I don't want to call you councilman, per Mark's point <laughs> would be relatively 
simple, it seems to me, because Mike is skilled to put something out in advance of hurricane season that speaks to the interconnectedness of our emergency response people. This, you know, that, that we, we drill it, uh, we function that way, whether it's a fire, an accident, mm -hmm. or a hurricane, you know, and, and in effect, put a spin on it, right? Yeah. It's, we do it, but people think we don't, so we, we need to say this is how we do it. This, we're interlocked, we're coordinated, et cetera. Right. Simple, and it's out yeah. there. And when I say expanded, um, I, I also not necessarily to put online, but just to make sure we have a plan for situations like a stranded swimmer, a uh, missing child, um, lost dog, um, you know, wh whatever the case may be, how are our own, you know, multi-agencies under the town coordinated in, in that kind of response, right? Who, who, who takes command uh, at the scene, right, based on a given emergency? Because it could be different, right? I mean, something out in the water is not something that's on land, right? So, we now have drone services. At, at what value does a drone service bring? I know for, we're talking about beach enforcement and the value of drone services, but what about in an emergency response situation? Does the drone service bring value to a missing child scenario or the stranded swimmer scenario or the you know, lost you know, dog scenario? I, I don't know, just whatever these emergency responses may come about, right? And we have historical record of what's mm -hmm. happened over the years. How do are we coordinated in our effort, you know, and and which agency gets precedent over another due to the circumstance, right? Things like that. So well, that, it's laid out. Good. Um, because I mean, the fire chief when we stepped on the scene for water rescue, the fire chief's in charge, and the water rescue chief talks to the fire chief. Fire chief is the one who communicates with the county. Lost child goes back to the police chief. Fire fire chief is the second on the down list and water rescues the third. Um, so those kind of things are already laid out procedurally for them okay, and their excellent. procedures. Good. Um, as far as the drone, the last year we used the drone, I think three different times for lost children on the beach. Uh, I think two of them were located. Uh, I don't mean the third one would come walking back up, but uh, they were located in different areas than when, they're, when they walked off. Family just got to the beach, kid walked to the, you know, to the water, turned around, mom and dad had took the left to put the umbrella up and they weren't nobody, so he just started walking the other way, um, and, and they found him. So, uh, and we have a meeting scheduled up next week with um, police and fire and uh, the drone to go over the procedures that we're going to utilize this year for those kind of things. So, excellent. That's already scheduled. Good. So, David, that's a great thing. I don't want to write copy for Mike because he's really good at it. But a mention of that meeting, you know, that we're this is ongoing work coordinating. We probably should talk about the kayakers who were rescued. That was a multi-agency response. Yeah. Put that out there. Even though people should know that, they probably, not everybody does. And so we, yeah. we have concrete examples of inter-agency coordination. Tell the story. I like stuff on the back. Water Rescue does that pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> they, got, they got a good little media group going there. So. Yeah, they do. So um, just so we can close this first one, I know we've talked about a lot of different things. Um, 1.5, are y'all comfortable with me working with David to put dates to the different deliverables in 1.5? Hey, you'll have all that stuff before the end of the year. So. For FY 22, 23. Yeah, I think... Um, or the end of this year. That's fine. Fiscal year. Yeah. I, I, maybe to... To, I think what um, John and I were trying to allude to is um, some suggestions around how to socialize the little wins or victories that we achieve with a multi-agency response, whether it's through the current. Uh, I'm a big fan of the current. Uh, I think that's going to be another topic that we talk about at budget or something. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, that could be a departmental type report. Uh, through the current where we, uh, you know, pat, give ourselves a pat on the back for, yeah. you know. The people need to know when we're doing things right. Yeah. Exactly. They're, 
Madam Mayor, can I move we take a five minute break? Um, I'm going to actually, I think you've earned a 10 minute break. Woo! Especially since we're off schedule. So if now. we can be back by no, I was trying to. a quarter till. <clears throat> I'll have to call him and tell him to forget it. Yeah, tell him. <laughs> hey, we're back from break. <laughs> Parks and Rec, priority two. Uh, Mayor? Yes. Can you talk a little lower? Thank you. I'll try. <laughs> I, I'm used to projecting my voice. Well, you sure did. Not a mic. <laughs> Let's do this. Better? Much better. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. No problem. So the goal is pretty simple, as it should be, create a vision and execute a plan for Parks and Rec. With the purpose, there's one correction to be made here, to create an environment that encompasses a well-rounded offering of programs and services that span age groups, interests, and abilities it provides the facilities needed to support them and to engender support for physical and mental health or welfare. But that should be spans, not expands. Um, so the first objective, conduct a study of the recreation infrastructure to ascertain the status and needs of the parks and rec department and facilities. Study should be affordable such it's not an economic burden should provide clear direction for the present and future needs of the town to enact, and should gather data from a cross-section of ages and geographic regions within the town. So, what, so what's been done so far is uh, last year we had um, EB, the engineer that's done some other analysis for us. He came in and evaluated the structure. Uh, so he wrote up the plan on how and what and when things should be addressed for the structure. Uh, council approved last year the seventy-five thousand um, uh, dollars, and then we had the rec director retire. Then we brought in the new rec director, and so she has been going through on things that she is looking at that she believes needs to be changed in there as well. Um, EB visited the site a few weeks back again and sort of updated a few things, um, and we need to. There's some mechanical, some plumbing, and some electrical that needs to be done. So hopefully we'll be getting those out here soon for uh, uh, projects to be done. He also, at that time, council had given direction uh, for them to come up with a conceptual uh, plan. Um, so there was a drawing that was done that you'll see during the budget process. Um, and we can go from there, um, changes or additions or look at adding more or less or those kind of things. Um, the original structure would be sort of the bathrooms would be relocated and enlarged. Uh, ADA accessibility would be looked at, and some of the smaller rooms would become offices. And the larger room, where the weight room and aerobics are now, um, or cardio, they would go to where the, the bigger room is now. Uh, and then the other rooms would be two smaller classrooms or one room with a retractable wall between it, so you could do either two rooms or one room. And then there would be a stage, uh, kitchen, um, storage rooms, and everything in the larger structure with a divider wall in it as well. Uh, but you would have uh, almost, it wouldn't be a full-size indoor basketball court, but it'd be a abbreviated version basketball court um, inside that structure. Uh, then there'd be a common foyer between the two buildings and basically the building that they had looked at putting is uh, located on the old basketball court behind the rec center. So that was that was already approved uh, or one thing that was approved last year and the year before so those things have been done so that can be part of um, part of this uh, to be presented during the budget uh, cycle for y'all's review. Uh, EB is updating his calls for the new structure uh, talking to the architect about uh, trying to get a rendering of a drawing of that was proposed uh, as well. Um, and we can have that during the process, but I just wanted to bring you up on what had been approved before. Excellent. So, it, so is it to uh, revisit? Um, 
the work that's been done before we move forward? The work that's been done is pretty conclusive, isn't it? I mean, they, they did a lot of they've done, yes, questions sir. and answers last year. They've done some things. Um, and then the plan is for you know, your review and consideration going to next year's budget, what dollars you want to put toward that. Uh, council had looked at a sort of a, a three-year plan um, with park and rec, a few different items that they were looking at last year. Um, so that could be revisited. Um, we can bring last year's uh, capital improvements and stuff that was done so y'all can know what those all are during the budget process. That'll be part of the presentation that we give to y'all. So you can see what they had sort of envisioned over a two-year period and where you, if you want to pick up or move things or add something to it or whatever y'all would like to do with those plans that they had as well um, and, and implement whatever y'all come up with. And the, 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 the additional building they came up with, is that, how many square foot was that? <laughs> Hatton's got over here in the book. I didn't bring Sorry, that. I didn't bring Sorry that, David. I didn't bring that with me to square foot. Just, um, double, double the size, so to speak? Uh, oh, yes, sir. Um, but it would have a stage in it as well so they could have the, the good old boys or whatever the name of the, old, the band that comes and plays on here on Friday nights or whatever it is. And then other activities could be put on in there as well. And then if you wanted to close it off and have a smaller thing, then you would pull the divider wall and close it off. But there was a kitchen and storage because um, we looked at that uh, as metal construction, uh, brick veneer on some of it, not all the way, but um, those kind of things because we was trying to make sure that what we built, you know, category four is what we had to build thing, windows and everything these days. Um, but the kitchen, that would give us some flexibility after a storm or something if we needed a kitchen to start setting up to feed people we were looking at that so we could utilize that area as well. Well thought out. When, when, uh, when do you see it come into fruition? Uh, well, it's supposed to be in next year's budget. I mean, the dollar we've stuck dollars in there to right. present to y'all, so okay. it, it's up to council direction on however they want to proceed. Sounds good, though. Two points. Um, going back to the purpose statement for a moment. Yep. So just... Created an environment that encompasses, I think you can take the article, take the A out of there, that encompasses well-rounded programming would be an easier sentence to read. And I think that's what we're saying. Um, I guess I'll ask you, Bill, because you probably have the most knowledge of this. If we build this extension, is it fair to call it an extension, right? and rehab the existing... Will we have enough capacity for the build out when the rest of Oak Island Reed mainland comes online? Is this facility gonna be big enough? That's my question. I would I would say mainland side, no, sir. If you're if you're in looking at all that, no. But it, looking at the square footages and stuff that we have there, that's if we go to another site we could expand or but it, I understand what you're asking, but no, sir. It, it would not provide enough space or room or well, anything. I guess or... what I, I'm, I'm going to phrase it this way. I'm fully supportive, but I don't want to build something that is inadequate five years from now. That's my point. And I don't know what those projections look like and what, what the square footage conversion is. If you assume there's 3,000 more residents in 2025 or 2026, but it seems to me we don't want to be penny wise and mm -hmm. pound foolish in doing something like this. It's close to 64. Yeah. The new, the addition. Just the addition. That's just the addition. Yes, sir. Right, right now, the, the rec center is pretty much being 75% utilized. Uh, yes, sir. Probably. Yeah. With the aerobics and. Um, Silver Sneakers and all those all different brands and groups. Yes, sir. What's our demographics as far as the age? Um, uh, who uses it? I'm assuming it's, it's uh, mostly retired. They have the middle age and seniors use it majority of the time. Okay. And then summertime we have the uh, camps and stuff for the youth. And with the indoor basketball courts, you'll be attracting more of the young people. We hope to. And the basketball court that's there now is hardly ever used, that particular one. That's right. Not much at all. Yeah. Is the proposed 
addition expandable or are you building all the way out? We're, we're filling in the land that we have up to the, up to the to where the water tower is and out to the streets, to the parking lots. And basically what we're looking at, um, we'd have to use some of the uh, right of way parking to meet our parking restrictions. Build a second story on it? That was discussed um, because back in the original study, people wanted a walking trail or a walk, interior walking area around. around it. So they looked at doing that. Mm -hmm. um, second story, you eliminate the basketball court and those kind of things if you add the second story on it, uh, just because of the, the lot width that we have to work with. Um, but uh, the second story could be added to the other structure, EB said, the concrete walls and those kind of things. The structure itself is in good shape. It's just everything in it's old. Yeah. Well, I mean, like Chris said. To follow up with, with what John was saying, do we see a, having to have two facilities, one on the island and one on the island? That would be something that would be worked out, I reckon, with a developer. Yeah, I was uh, wondering, that's where I was going with it, with the developer. But, uh, is that an amenity we need to think about for a Williamson track? Yeah. I mean, we had looked at some of these kind of things before. Um, we had talked about utilize, utilizing Station 3 at South Harbor. If uh, we brought the fire trucks and everything back to Station 2, then that open bay would be converted into a park and rec facility. Um, again, it, that's on the outskirts of the town on one corner again. That's not centrally located or anything like that. But when you look at the Williamson track, yes, it would be on the outside skirts, but that outside skirts is 8,000 people. Yeah. So. It's, it's, town itself. it's a different thing to sort of look at. And Williamson also would accommodate Pine Forest, something yeah. in that yes, area. Sir. And that's why when they asked about building a fire station on 211, that's when we object, objected to that because, again, it'd be sticking us on the very far corner of our property, and our five miles goes out to where we have no land, so we wanted to bring it back to try to encompass some of the island on it as well. So to address John's concern, if we did an add-on at the local rec center, and if we thought about approaching Williamson, uh, their, their 10 acres, uh, a couple, one or two acres, be a rec center, as they thought. Yeah, well, I mean, we're, when we're looking at the structure that we're uh, discussing where you have fire, police, EMS, and hopefully EOC on the second floor, or whatever it ends up being, I think we could encompass a, an area that we could do some type of recreation activities as well. Um, I mean, when you're building aerobics rooms or cardio rooms, it's a room with equipment. Yeah. Um, so those kind of structures, I think, could be added on. We're building a parking lot. I mean, they've already addressed we're building a parking lot. Uh, we just have to look at what, I mean, it's a cost to us. They're not, I don't think they would build as a rec center, um, but they, the land would be donated to us. So it's something that we'd have to look there as well uh, to see what we want to do. Um, I'm sure they're gonna look at it as we're gonna have a health and fitness yeah. uh, provider in there. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna have people in there probably open up a business for those kind of things as well. Um, so I'm sure that's something we'd have to look at. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to get them to commit to the 10 acres. And my reason for that question is because we may not know today all that we would want in say two years from now. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure what we'll do is will be somewhat phased. I don't know if we'll have the capital to In acres goes once. a long way though when it when it yeah. comes to usable land. Usable land. <laughs> not not well. Keyword. Well one thing that we, we can think about um, it would be quite expensive to have two rec centers um, but what we could do is create a satellite recreational facility out there. I think I mentioned this before. In Florida, believe it or not, uh, their state parks are quite advanced. That Most of them contain walking trails, playground, and an outdoor gymnasium. So it's, it's expensive equipment, but it can be bought. And so that gives... Uh, all those residents another opportunity to recreate without having to drive into the center of our town so just a thought you know, brunswick county has several satellite off or recreation facilities that they rent and lease out i mean the senior center in southport 
I mean, they, they utilize that as a, a facility for them. So I'm sure that concept does work for us as well. Okay. So does this basically change to review and affirm the work that's already been done? Well, I know one thing that we're going to have to do this year, um, we're going to need to do another survey. Uh, when we had the uh, grant uh, individual in the other day talking about grants, uh, we haven't had a survey in two years or about 18 months or something like that. So you need to keep those up. So we're going to, uh, she'll be working with the Park Rec Advisory Board to come up with a uh, layout of, of what kind of questions and how they want to address a, a survey. So I know we're going to be doing a survey this year. And in those, we can devise whatever council's wanting to ask as well, uh, recreation activities, age groups, um, how far you're willing to travel, um, and, and those kind of things to put into the survey to see what kind of input we get back. Um, what's happened on the last two surveys is swim pool. Um, the swim pool group, just that other column, they bombarded us. So when we got the survey completed, it said we needed to build a pool. Um, and so we need to address that issue in the survey, um, saying we're not looking at building a pool or just going to address something, um, because that, that will affect our survey. Because that group is... They're going to show up. <laughs> they are going to bombard us. Um, I had two comments sure. on, on these. Um, I'm assuming we're combining... A quite a few of these objectives uh, around the rec center. So the first comment uh, Mr. Kelly just addressed, and, which is I'd like to see the previous survey that was done. Um, I don't know if we need to schedule time together to look at that or if we can just get copies of that. And if we have to do another survey, that's great, but I'd like to at least see what was done previously around the survey uh, and what input that was. My second comment is, um, I think it's certainly the smart plan to consume the basketball court area for a new extension to the rec center. That area is not used, or at least that I've ever seen it being used, uh, and then kind of connect it. But I'm assuming, or I'm hoping that that means it's some sort of L-shaped building is what we end up with, that we're preserving the trees on the... Um, east side of the parcel there near 31st Street. There's trees over there. Um, and I had envisioned a, a walking trail that winds in and out of those trees with maybe some benches. To your point, people were saying, hey, can we have some sort of you know, track or, or trail indoors? Well, I think we could put one outdoors that encompasses all of the vegetation that's already there, and hopefully we don't disturb it and then in addition to that, um, are we considering um, storage capacity with this extension? Because we have all those sheds along the back of the property that I feel like we should get rid of and, and move those into a more formal, secure storage area. And then my next question would be, would that open up the back side of the property to, for like a little connector road uh, from 30th to 31st, where we could also add additional parking, where all the, what I call it shed row is now. <laughs> if all the sheds were gone because we had, we had storage somewhere else, um, then could we use that for additional parking and as a connector? So kind of circle the rec center, or right? Could we just the, move the sheds up in the front? That's an excellent oh. idea. <laughs> So the shed, they, they belong We're to different, different organizations. We're being recorded, uh, that, guys. And, and we could probably relocate most of those to somewhere else. That would be great. So um, those, that would be my only input is, you know, additional parking on the mm -hmm. complete rear of the site with some sort of connection um, and eliminating the sheds, protecting the trees, putting in some kind of walking adventure that leverages that piece of land. So in the budget process, well, when we get to the recreation department, when we present this item, um, it'll have other things that we already had in there. Do you want to go ahead and do the architectural rendering? Do you want to go ahead and do the site plans and those kind of things? So that leads into what you're saying. So then that's where we have some estimated dollars in there for the improvement project. Uh, and then those will be discussed when we get to the rec department and you'll add whatever you want to do at that time 
um, but we just had the basic things for y'all to start looking at currently. I like the walking trails, but also isn't Scott right now building uh, sidewalks all the way around Middleton Park? Yes. That's going to end up being a nice walking trail if people utilize it. Yeah, I think um, it is going to be nice. You're right. Um, to me, I, th I, I would be inclined to support a new storage facility on the site, so we'll probably cut down on some of your parking. In terms of walking, you can go straight down the street over the crosswalk and all the way down to the beach. So we don't, I don't think we need to put a walking facility there, but what we need is storage that works. And it, it, what we have looks terrible, and that space probably could, we're probably gonna need additional parking when we have additional residents. Yeah, I was just thinking that it would be um, maybe simple and inexpensive to create some sort of little uh, walking trail or, among those trees because some people will come out of their workout and they'll they'll want their cool down and it would be nice if their cool down was you know a little short path outside yeah uh, we actually have trees. a trail there that goes back yeah. right we could just augment what we already have great put so, some signs up let them know what's there so to move this along basically 1.1 ends up being review and affirm then the doing the study is already in the works and the things that we're talking about would what we learn in the study and what uh, we're talking about adds to the needs list that would go to the architect is that right mm -hmm. we're pretty far down the road already mm -hmm. um, so we're well into 1.3 and 1.4 um, yeah. and 1.5 is uh, about the par three. I think we need to answer that question mm -hmm. one way or the other. And then um, the other recommendation was that we already have brochures, Oak Island, a time to coast, but um, if we updated that, we could include walking paths, uh, certain amenities, and golf cart routes, um, which wasn't on the safety list, but should be. Can I go back to 1.5 for a minute? So, sure. ha having been on the uh, golf course committee for a long time, uh, a very frustrating time, maintaining the quality of the course is one issue, and that largely goes to the groundskeeper and how good he or she is. The thing that we've not done, that needs to be done from my point of view, and what I would add here is, we need a marketing plan to attract golfers to the uniqueness of the course. We, This is one of those things that have been kicked down the road again. A serious marketing plan with money behind it. Um, working with the rental community, working online, creating the course as a kind of niche thing. There aren't many par three courses left. It's multi-generational. I can bring my grandkids out there. Um, I can still play it, right? Um, we need to do that in a full-throated way and see what mm -hmm. happens. Because right before the pandemic, the course was on an uptick. And of course, the pandemic changes everything. Now the course is in, what would you say, Charlie? Minor disrepair? I'd give it a D. Yeah. Most of the greens need attention. But I talked to Jonathan about that a while back because I have a vested interest. And he was explaining to me about certain processes that have been done that won't come to fruition until the weather changes. So I'm waiting to see. I'm hoping that it'll it'll come back up and and to your point um i get to talk to a lot of the guys that are playing out there and i was surprised to learn how many don't live in oak island uh st james comes over and plays uh, there's a lot of guys that come over and play from other communities because they're at the age where they can't play 18 big ones so they they play and uh, so I think that uh, there's a possibility there, but you hit the point, and I'm 
mentioned that several times in the past, you've got to have a marketing plan. Yes. Because most people of people come to town, they don't even know it's there. Yeah, they say, what golf course? Said, they say, where do you live? I said, I live over on, on par three golf course. And they go, where's that? So we need to do something with a marketing, absolutely, John, right on marketing Some people plan. think only South Harbor can play there. Well, and market to the people that it's appropriate for. Right. Well, right? like John said, so kill the market rental companies. the features. A serious golfer is not going to enjoy playing there. But if it's, um, I know there's a, a youth program yeah. out there that they already do. There can be camps during the summer. Um, well, there, uh, there can constant. be competitions with. Yeah. We've got to get the groundskeeper, though, to get lucky and get. Yeah, well, I'm get his greens up to, uh, he's up promised, to par. He's promised me, so we'll see. But the thing about it is, is with the marketing plan, you could market to the, to the uh, which, which is successful, the uh, breast cancer awareness orcs, mm -hmm. and you could reach out to other uh, charities, whatever you want to call them, and encourage them to come play because nice. people will play a par three when they won't play the big course because they're <laughs> they don't play that well and and the grandkids is another point because I look out there all the time and see you know the little kids out there right so if the course were approaching pristine and we actually had a plan right right so the the subsidy that we're running could be I think cut in half I think that's a very reasonable goal we could do that because on a pristine course the other thing that you know you market is it's great for your short game and you don't have to wait four hours and you don't have to play with a foursome because it's basically target golf. I mean, I play the entire course with a seven iron. Yeah. Basically, it's a pitching wedge most of the time. So if the greens are in good shape, it is challenging. And even a good golfer, you know, it's a good tune-up. You can play an entire 18 holes in under two hours, easily walking. So, but we got to sell it. That's, that's the guys the from thing. St. James, they'll come over, they'll play 18, they'll go have lunch, come back and play another 18. You know, that they have a regular schedule. And th that is it. The key right now, right now for me is the condition of the course. Because I'm hesitant to recommend it because it looks like... No, but if we get it into shape... Right. And we consider the things that might make it more playable. Right. Like how to appropriately enhance it and then market it to the people that it's would appreciate it for what it is. Yeah, identify your audience. Exactly. So um, to, just to put a cap on this, and I'm going back to, well, let's see, 2017. The budget typically for marketing was three or $400. That's not going to get it done. You know, we got to get serious about marketing um, and hope that we'll get a return sufficient to reduce the, the subsidy. And, you know, word of mouth is everything. Once people find out about it, right, and they, they know they can play it, and it, it's attractive, right? And, Charlie, I promise not to hit your house again. <laughs> once, the, once the greens get up, up to the condition we want, then Mike could put pictures all over the social media and get the word out that that bad reputation you heard a year or two ago was no longer the situation. We just need to advertise. It needs advertise passion. it once. It needs some passion behind it. I mean, it's just yes. not. Yeah. It's always been the stepchild, you know. Yeah. Just, South Harbor's problem. Yeah. Right. And and you know that goes to the old saying that just because it's free doesn't necessarily make it worth getting involved with. Well, I see all the time grandparents and uh, looking for things to do with younger kids and. Um, if this were in better shape, we, uh, we could certainly market it there as well. Um, so there are no timelines on any of these. Do we want to? Um... Well, I'm willing to work with somebody on the marketing plan. If... Well, I just had three comments that I wanted to contribute before we move off of this topic. One, uh, regarding the marketing plan, I think there's also an opportunity that where we should look at packaging other amenities, uh, not just promoting the PAR-3 as a sole source. For example, the 801 Center, maybe there's a corporate event that you bundle in around uh, at the PAR-3 course if those people come to town, or whether it's a retirement dinner or a 
training or whatever, uh, we could look at packages that bundle in a round of golf at the par three uh, for corporate events or even for weddings. I mean, those people are coming in probably for the weekend, you know, it offer as a little extra, you know, feature code or rider into their rental agreement. Hey, would you, you know, throw in a round of golf for your guests for only, you know, $19.99 or whatever. I don't know what the cost is, but you understand the concept that we start bundling some of our amenities to help drive traffic, uh, not just to one facility, but multiple facilities. Second thing is I'd like us to revisit beer and wine sales at the par three. I know it's a hard battle because of the HOA situation over there, um, but I think it's a key part of making it more marketable. It, it's gonna be a tough fight, but it's one I'm willing to roll up my sleeves and help in any way that I can. But I think beer and wine sales are needed uh, over there at the concession. And then the final item is I had suggested this back in January. It's more of a long, way long range planning but if we are going to be vested in operating a golf course and trying to make it profitable and attracted, um, I had suggested converting it into a nine hole course, still keeping the yardage uh, short, but switching out some of the holes to make them a par four. And you could potentially reduce the number of greens that you have to upkeep. Uh, mowing and keeping up fairways is easy. <laughs> The greens are the hard part that we all know. So that may be something we, can, I don't want to lose that. I want to keep that uh, on, the, on the agenda topic, whether we do something about it or not. I just don't want to lose the idea of one day, should it be a nine hole course? To your point, Charlie, I could play the front nine in the morning, have lunch and go back in the afternoon and play the back nine. People will ask me, well, what does that mean? Well, that means every green has two flags. There's two pins in every green, white and a blue or red and an orange or whatever colors you want to make them. So you play one pin for your front nine, you play the other pin for your back nine. Well, so. uh, we'll keep it on the agenda. As a golfer, I can tell you, first of all, the routing won't work without major effort and expense. And the greens are too small to be par fours. They're, they're target greens. They're designed to be small. And uh, that would be a huge undertaking. I like your idea about bundling. I guess what I'm saying is, I'll put it in plain terms. If we want to reduce the deficit, because we're, we're in this compact, we need to get serious. We need to get a professional to give us advice. So, for, for example, your idea about bundling, that's a great idea. I, I would say every person who buys a house in Pine Forest or in uh, Williamson gets a discount. Gets a, you know, there are lots of things we could do. We just don't do them. We need to get serious, and we can take that number, which is over 100. What's the number, Mr. Hatton? 100,000? What's the subsidy? What are we losing in the golf course? <laughs> 83 something. All right, well, I say we can cut it in half with an effective marketing campaign, and that's significant. 227? That's a lot. How much? $227,000. Maybe not half, but we'll make, make <laughs> inroads. We've moved that much money so far this year. Yeah. That's, okay. That's a lot. All right. Well, uh, half, I think, is a good target. Let's stick to it. Okay. But we need professional Like you said, advice. though. You know, we, we all have quaint ideas. We need somebody who knows how to do this, right? Put a banner over Oak Island Drive, discount coupons, bundling, et cetera, et cetera. And you can even do something with, uh, I've seen it done with uh, some of the businesses in Florida go into a restaurant or whatever, they will actually give you, you know, for golf course, they will actually give you a discount, a coupon. You go to Shiger Jacks, you get 20% off at the right, exactly. par three. There's okay. all kinds of ideas. We just got to get, get, get aggressive. Get it done. Get aggressive. There's a committee, Yes, and that's another thing. If you guys, I invited the mayor to the next meeting, um, and uh, as a matter of fact, the, meet, the committee suggested it. And I think that would be something if any of us would like to go attend a meeting once in a while, I think that would give the uh, morale a, a boost. Yeah. They've had an opening for an Oak Island resident to be on that committee for quite some time. I had three. That, for, for monthly 
and months and months and months and months. Um, and I know during the pandemic, maybe people weren't out as willing to get out, but um, there are currently only two people on that committee. Um, one thing you, I don't know if you want to consider opening it up to the whole committee, just to anybody who wants to be on it in the town, and then if it's filled up with five South Harbor residents, it's filled up at least. Just a suggestion. I think it needs some, some input thinking on it. Well, I think you'll attract people if you give them a budget to work with and a task and a goal, which we have. So are we, is the task that we'll hear from staff at our budget workshops regarding what was transferred this year, what was left remaining, how much of that could be used toward a marketing plan, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, you'll see all that. Okay. And I don't even want to bring up the topic of a third party maintenance company because I have a feeling that contract would be more expensive than what we're paying already. So I'm hoping that the current resources in place have the tools and the knowledge and we should hopefully see improvements as the weather improves. We, we did upgrade the merchandise with the new town park guys. Okay. Because there was crap, you know, pretty much crap that's been in there for two or three years with dust on it and nobody cared. So I'm not in there. There's yeah. some, there is some uh, new equipment that they've ordered, but as with everything, they it's on back order. Mm -hmm. So they got they got some new equipment coming, which is a good thing because right. you have to have. I didn't realize you have to have a certain lawnmower to mow certain things. So I volunteered to mow number four, and they told me no, leave it alone. So. In 2000, 2018, the course was in best shape it's been in in a long time. Numbers were moving up. We were beginning to generate substantial revenue, and then it all died off. So. Can it be profit making? Unlikely. But can it be far less expensive to us as taxpayers? Yes, that's the goal. It just needs some innovation, some new ideas, some um, an injection of volunteer effort, et cetera. With hopefully return on investment. First and foremost, you have to have a course that looks nice and that plays. Playable. Without that, you can't market anything. You know? No. Not to get into the weeds, is somebody looking at one and two in the the um, non water hazards that are there? On the water side, yes. Okay. We've asked that. I haven't asked that again, but yes. Okay. That I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. What was the question? On holes one and two, there yeah. should be water hazards that, but they're not water oh, you hazards because the, they all the weeds are growing. Yeah. Yeah. So. All the other water hazards on the course are functioning as they should. They're water hazards, but those two are not water hazards. They're mud hazards. <laughs> so it'd be nice if they were water features again or water like hazards again. Better. Yeah. I think it came to where we needed to dig those back out to a certain elevation. Right. I think so. So we can we'll put the money in the budget. They used yeah. to be fishing. <laughs> People have told me they're like it, David. Yeah, people are like, you can't touch those reeds, but yet I see tire tracks through the mud and across the reeds. I'm like, well, somebody's going into the reeds. This is kind of off subject. Like, we didn't do that. As many people as I see riding by Publix looking at the alligator, if we could get an alligator over there for people to come look at, they would they would really, there used to be one over there. I don't know what happened to them. But. Uh, there's there's one on the, the real golf course. <laughs> Yeah, he's always yeah. been there. Oh yeah, yeah. on seventeen. Yeah. The day, uh, go ahead. All kidding aside, maybe we should make the uh, the Gator at Publix a tourist attraction. No, <laughs> um. So is the study in this year's budget, or is it something that has to be budgeted for next year? The study is not in this year's budget. No. Okay, It'd so it's next, next year. year. And the marketing plan would be. Next year's budget. Next year's budget. Unless there's some money left over from our 227. And then the architect <laughs> is next year's budget. The beer and wine, we can talk to them. We will ask the uh, individual who lives there to see if he can get put on one of their board, I mean, one of their HOA meetings to have us come address the I issues. Will, I will gladly do that, but I like Mr. Martin said, um, 
every time I talk about it, they just laugh at me. Yeah. And uh, and I'm serious. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, people will come in there, they will sit there, have a beer, hang around, tell lies to each other, you know, all kinds of stuff about how many hole in ones they made and all this, and then they'll go out and play again. Is there a little patio area there? Oh, yeah, yeah. They got a swimming that pool. They got a swimming pool and everything. Well, it I mean, is, but we rent one one little corner and a storage room, and then we share a bathroom facility with them. Okay. And then that bathroom facility, well, there's a hallway that leads to the right. common area. Right. Um, we do not have anything in that that we rent, or and that is one of their concerns. Um, the maintenance of that, who would take care of that, who is liable for that, whose insurance would cover if somebody's in that room and gets hurt. It, it was, they had a, they had more reasons not to talk to us than they had, please come talk to us. So at some point, that those things would need to be addressed. And that was another thing when we was looking at South Harbor, uh, if we did ever make the change from fire station um, two and three, that area in South Harbor then would become the clubhouse for the par three. Hole one would be nine, nine would be one. We'd have to turn that around. Um, but we had looked at what we would do and what we could do, and then we'd have a uh, an area that we could turn into a clubhouse. Then we wouldn't have those stipulations put on us by a third party. But that's for that's for another day. Another day. <laughs> simpler solution, because I understand their concerns, uh, especially with a pool area and residents using it. But if we had beer and wine on a takeout basis and we had tables right outside along the putting green, that would probably work as opposed to invading their their space. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. There's, there's a way to talk. I had another idea about a golf cart with beer on it. Yeah, food and beverage cart. Absolutely. I won't. Uh, there's another. There's another facet of that that mm -hmm. I'll discuss with you guys individually. Okay. All right. We ready to move on? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um. Is, is one point six in, in coming up in our budget discussions as well? Is there going to there's going to be some money to update that brochure, right? Yes. Okay. There has to be. Yep. All right. But one of the things we need to do is decide golf cart routes. Has that already been done, David, or does that need to be considered? Um, I know I have several people have sent me proposals. When we see the, uh, when we bring the chief on board and things get settled in, um, there's a few of us that's drawn out many a line how we believe this should be. And uh, I think at some point we'll put all the lines on one piece of paper and try to figure out which route is the best. Do you want any suggestions that have been sent to me? Fine. You can drop them off. I believe some of those guidelines are covered under state statute, though. Yes, I mean, there's some there's some routes that no matter who wants it, you're just not allowed to do it. Correct. So those are the easy ones to to yeah. mark off the list. We'd have them take a left and go down the yacht. Then they would be on Oak, and then some would be on Live Oak, and then 40th Street. And, you know, that's a cut across, and but yeah, no, it's, it should be pretty easy to do. But we have many views of many people. <laughs> um, so beach issues uh, we're absent a goal and a purpose of what it is we're trying to do um, I believe that those, would really help our focus I thought we defined those in January I guess maybe they didn't get captured but we had talked about the purpose was beach preservation and then we had a very lengthy definition of beach preservation as our goal that Mr. Kelly read out. I guess it just didn't get captured. Um, that's fine. I still have it in here probably. Do you? Can you send it? Mm -hmm. And I'll update it. So. I believe that was it. <laughs> I believe it was, yeah. <laughs> yes. Say again. I believe this he is it. I'll, phone, I'll, I'll right. send it to you. Yeah. Okay. And that's fine. It just didn't make it into it to capture. But we, yeah, we did discuss those items. So yep. and I'm sorry. Continue on. Well to yep. send. Good, because that just creates focus. Um, 
the 21st we're having our last sand farm? Is that when that's scheduled? The 22nd, 22nd. is when the <laughs> model comes I was looking for it. Uh, the 20, yeah, it's a Monday, I think. The 21st? Whatever, okay. Yeah, it's a public release of the models. And that's when, David, that's when you have your proposals. That's when we're going to meet this Monday to talk about the two of y'all's thing. Yeah. And then we'll incorporate everything that we have and submit on the, or provide to the public on that date and address council on the 21st, 6 o'clock of March. March. And then we have, we'll make a decision on the April, at the April meeting. So. The, Sorry, I thought you said it was the 22nd. 22nd? 22nd? That's what I have. That's the Tuesday. Check my calendar. I wrote it down. I don't know. I have the 22nd. <laughs> I have the 22nd. It's the 22nd. Okay. I don't know what it is. Okay. Uh, you, they usually that. tell me this is show up. 22nd. It's on the calendar that we're going to be giving you in a minute for the 22nd. <laughs> Six o'clock. Yeah. Maybe I'll move it on mine. That's at 108, right? 801. Is it 704? <laughs> is that confirmed? It'll be here, won't it? It'll be here at 6 o'clock. 22nd. So objective 3.1 is basically to complete the plan nourishment. Yes. Efforts. Yeah. Um, I'd recommend taking the match out and making it a separate objective that maps to what our plan is. It's a different task. Are you okay with that? And um, the current 3.2 regarding enforcement is um, a plan. Well, that was brought up probably in the first section with the relationships with the police and the firemen and everybody in the education and we're, we're we're continuing to go over that and we should have a final version of what we're going to do presented to you uh, probably at the april meeting since that's when we're presenting the other yeah that's that's where i b believe the the state of the discussion ended that the administration given the you and cry to enforce this major investment we were going to come back with a new plan so whether that's signage of the drone or more part-time police yeah. work, working with the realtors i'm i'm expecting to see a checklist of things that we're going to do i think mark argued for higher fines correct and so on <coughs> i'm recalling the discussion you have it captured right david yeah yeah okay education via the wallet as i call it well, I think you need you know, like the signs and stuff. I mean, because a lot of people who come down here, my concern is, is they don't know. They just, Boy, you know, when that I was flashing sign says "Stay off the dunes" pretty loud and clear. Well, I mean, they need, they need a rope all the way down here. I mean, that's I know that's maybe not the right answer, but something to to tell these people that they're not they're not supposed. When it says "Don't walk on the dunes," some of them don't even know what dunes are. Well, Topsail had an interesting approach to signage. They had the signage next to the road. But when you think about it, where do people look when they're walking? It's not up here where the signs are. It's down here. So where Topsail put their signs, and they were small, compact, and it says, stay off the dunes. And there was one on the right and one on the left. So maybe a different strategy might yeah. at least test a different strategy at certain walkovers might be worthwhile. With the word fine next to it. Yeah, 16 inch signs, and they put them in turns or steps. So you had to either be looking there or. <laughs> yeah. So the signs are where you're looking, not where you're not looking. Well, I would. It would be less expensive as well. What's. We can have the stick, but we also need the carrot. Absolutely. We, do, we do need to educate people. I really, I personally, I have a problem with the fines being too high. I mean, I, you know, what you want, $500? I 
I think that's Oh, then that's three. Buy me five hundred dollars. I ain't coming back. Stay off the dude then. <laughs> See? Well, there's I no don't speed around Keenansville and Warsaw when I drive to Raleigh. That's where the state troopers are. I might speed around Benson. They're never there. Yeah, so if they enforce that, I'm going to behave. Um, well, I'm not against sending the message. I'm just how loud are you going to yell at them? Yeah, I know. So, Lisa, could you um, re help remind me to look up if we can charge the $500? Or at least more. Thank you. And they got always. What do we charge you now, Char uh, David? We charged a hundred dollars each on the ones we issued this past weekend. Okay. But uh, if you're giving warnings in a three-strike rule and you're still walking over the dunes, then you deserve to have to pay five hundred dollars because it costs us more than that to repair the area you just. Destroyed. Well, I think Charlie's objection, I share it, is that for the first-time violator, that's. A pretty steep, pretty steep fine. But I, I don't know that we viol that we fine anyone the first time. Well, I would uh, fine them all this past weekend. Did we? Council gave us direction. Council said fine. Where I, you thank you, sir. Thank where you, sir. I would support it, Mark, is uh, these folks who are tunneling through the dunes from their rental properties. That should be a five hundred dollar fine. Not somebody walking up there, or kids, but people who are actively denaturing the dune, tunneling, shoveling. Yeah, fine. Visible destruction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I like that. I'm okay with that. There, I think. But then, were. but then you're faced with it's at the discretion of the law enforcement to determine the level of severity of damage being done. I think. Just define it. We show a person standing on a dune. That's a hundred. We show a shovel in a hand or any signs of digging. That's five hundred. Simple enough. Yeah, and we were given direction from y'all to. How many tickets did tickets. you give? Did they give last week? The four. Four. That's four more than the week before. I, I'm assuming. And I'll talk to you about that here when we take a break. Okay. And not to throw off the subject of dunes, but what's our parking fine again? Remind me of that. Fifty dollars. May need to up that one as well. You could ask Lisa to look into that. I just got to make sure I got that. All the ordinances match up together. Right. Um, 3.3. Trying to get us back on track. Um, so we've already addressed funding. Or is this funding for I think this is two different. I think this was two different things. Okay. Um, we were looking, the first one was looking at funding for the um, matching grant. Right. And then this funding was looking at if we ever did um, any kind of uh, improvements or maintenance or jetty or grown or whatever we was looking at later. Um, funding, how would we go about funding things in the future? So it's building a reserve fund for future work, future maintenance? It's, it's building, it's preparing for a maintenance program. Right, around yeah. funding. And I'm sorry, what, did you say that there was a text change to 3.1? I think I may have missed that. Or John pointed out, leave out the word A. Oh, in 3.1, we just took the word A out. Or um, well, it's about executing or completing. Okay. And then the matching 20 million, developing a plan to right. match is a different objective, yep. a new 3.2. So, um, and for I, next year, it would be, I'm sorry, John, it would be uh -huh. revisit or revise, um, revisit and revise as necessary the enforcement plan based on what we learned this year. Okay. Right, so and we've got one for this year, and next year we need to be looking at what worked, what didn't work. So I'm, I'm gonna ask a question about 3.3. Um, I understand it would be a maintenance set aside, presumably in the ongoing budget, one after the other. What does new bid process mean? Yeah. That we'd re we reopen 
the um, opportunity for who we select to execute the maintenance plan that we're just not going to assume that it's the same. We're talking about the engineering of it. That's we're correct. talking about the delivery of sand. Right. For but, that when we come to the maintenance opportunity, we're going to to open that up and talk to other engineering companies at okay. that point in time. Because we looked at where the uh, cleanest point of disconnect is, and the project after they finish stage three, the nourishment project, then that paperwork would be complete. And then we would be able to well, look I, for. I would suggest that we put engineering in there so we, we all know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's not an FY 22 23. No, that's probably. down oh, the road. No. That'd be, oh, heavens, no. So that yeah. we need to pull that, make that a separate thing. and That'd be 25 26. So this 25, phase three 26. will go through, tw go in 24. Right. Okay. Oh, when you say engineering, you, you mean mopping? Yeah, I think that's what the intent is here. We should say. Yeah, the intent is that we, you know, we don't want ourselves nor the public nor Moffat and Nickel to just assume that once the nourishment is complete, that they're going to be awarded the maintenance uh, effort. And so we want to reopen that up and RFP. listen to other other people. Yeah, or well, we could just say we're going to take RFPs, but what, whatever. Right. It's clear. So then. Public awareness, again, that's a, a build on what we learned this year. It is, and I think um, uh, Mike yes. uh, took some efforts to start <coughs> doing some rendering and some graphics, so we just need more of that as we communicate uh, to the public our progression. I think, I think graphics are an excellent way to show the, what we're doing, so... Um, so the pieces that got lost in here is public education, um, unless that comes under the outreach. And I had mm -hmm. talked about, and the people have asked for a multidisciplinary um, group of folks, call it a commission, call it a a committee, call it or whatever, to um, review and develop a long-range uh, plan for beach yeah, maintenance. I, I think that's what we meant by outreach, but you can further define that however you'd like. Can we make that a so we can give them outreach slash education, the education or, right? Yep. Piece two. Absolutely. Mayor, is that something you're working on yourself, or is that something you want the council to work on? Um, I was going to do a straw man and give it to y'all to react to. Or talk to the council of government. Um, I'm sorry, the school of government at UNC for some ways to go about that. So it's not a typical, it would be an atypical committee. So you're on top of it, maybe. I haven't done it yet, but yeah. So when would you want to see that? That plan. I think we have a whole lot of questions going forward, so the quicker the better, in my thoughts. Well, if you're looking through the process that we're currently on, or the um, plan that we're currently on, I would say that you would need it 20... Well, the project will probably be 24, 25, so 20, 23, 24. That would be the latest time. Well, no, but I'm thinking if this is a 22, 23 project. To the, the project together, then you need the. The project on hand is already, is a nourishment project that right. is defined. Right. So the project they'll yep. be working on would be future projects. I'm talking, to, yes. But to put the plan together would precede that, Take right? Time. And if it includes education, <coughs> then, and it's a, a committee slash commission slash whatever you want to call it, um, when you and I talked, 
He was like no earlier than the fall that would put that in place. Have your thoughts changed? I think, I mean, my view of it, they would be working. Uh, it all depends how many years you want somebody working on something. If you want somebody working on three years of something before it finally becomes a reality, then as long as their interest and everybody's concentration stays for three years, it'll be a good thing. Um, I don't know how long the duration of a committee needs to be or those kind of things. Was it something that was just going to be a committee going forth for the next eight years? Or that's what I don't well, it's not. It, it's whatever we think we need. Is it a is it a standing group? There used to be a beach committee. Um, it's definitely advisory in nature. Someone who can inform the science and build educational programs for the public that can be delivered online or um, uh, in person. Well, the priority. Let's let's stay focused on, on the near term. The models, such as they may be, uh, and hopefully you two gentlemen are going to get your data so that the, your model is included, that's the next key step. And then April 12th, a, a decision, you know, major proportions, then the budget. So I would say a, after the budget, what you're formulating, I, I think, is important because all of us have heard this complaint that we have all this natural talent, geologists, scientists, etc., in the community, we don't utilize them. So I think that's brilliant. The details, I'm back to details. So the mandate of the committee, such as it may be, how it's chartered, right. how, how people are appointed to it or selected, how long it runs, you know, all those details, the mayor uh, is taking the lead. And it comes to us and we approve it. And so they're formally chartered as a, what a commission committee and they have a mission. And yeah, their mission would be advisory, obviously, all right? But they could be advising on a number of things. Right. All beach related. It doesn't have to be just the renourishment. Exactly. Could be signage, could be alternative strategies, et cetera. My question is when do you want the straw man? I, I, I'm happy to take it in, in May and June. Just once we get into the budget, but it's a FY twenty two twenty three project. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think um, it. I think it is. But the advantage to you to, to, to formulate it and have council approve it is, even though you're not going to enact it, you can announce it. And I think people would be quite receptive to say, okay, they're listening to us, and there's a formal mechanism. The mayor's proposed it, and council supported it, even though you're not going to enact it right away. So, uh, that would give me till July. End yeah, absolutely. Believe me, you'll be worn out after the budget. <laughs> right, Charlie? Don't you love the budget? Yeah, okay. There you go. No, I think it's a great idea. I think you need to put flesh on the skeleton and get it to us, and we announce it. We don't need it right away. Yeah, that's a whole different story, but at least it's done. Mm -hmm. Anything else about beach? We've been working on this all along, but just need to put it in the context. Well, I think um, our understanding should be clear going forward, I hope it is, that at the special, the next special meeting, which is the last of these special meetings, our modeling, which is a variety of options, you know, up and down the line, is presented and explained. That's it. What I want to say to the public is, as we learn of the models and we study them and evaluate them, you should do the same. And then public comment will be taken April 12th. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a free-for-all. We don't want that. No. So I think, you know, model one, two, three, four, if there's five, all have their various features, perhaps advantages, disadvantages. That should be carefully considered. And not just, you know, first blush, I don't like, you know, I think, they hear it, they have it, and then we'll have to decide by the 12th, and there'll be, I'm sure, ample opportunity for public comment. I, well, I, think, it's, I think it's important that we remind people we only have to 
respond to the state that we're committed to m matching funds. We don't have to have the funds waiting to be drawn against. And our plan or these models that we'll be looking at are just that. They're models that we want to execute on. However, in the end, you know, we're committed to the match. So there could be changes along that journey depending on new financial data that becomes available to us sure. because the tax base continues to change. Um, accommodation tax will change. We've already seen an, uh, an uplift in that category in this current fiscal year, as Mr. Hatton pointed out to us um, recently. So, so yeah, we can, we can discuss models and we can adopt a model, but the most important thing is that we remain committed to matching the state yeah. without having the money in hand, nor a solid, this, this model has to be the model to get no. us there. I, I, well, the models are an approach. The numbers may change, but right. the That's model correct. is an approach, and we're saying to the community, this is what we think is in the best interest. If we can do better, because of something we're not anticipating, we'll do better. But yeah, I like Mark's caveat. Um, my point would be, though, that in choosing a direction, we, we need to choose one, because we need to get this item off our agenda and move on to other important business. If we keep it open-ended, it will paralyze us going Thanks. forward. So, yeah. yes, it's model, I'm just making up a number, model number three, based on current judgment, that could change. We could implement paid parking next year, and then you've got another revenue stream. So, yes, subject to change, subject to funding, fine. Our it? approach remains the same. Correct, correct. Our answer, give an answer that we're right. ready to go forward. So, I mean, that's a caveat. <laughs> Put a period Most of the public is probably going to miss. They're going to look at the big, what's it cost me? That's, but that's precisely my point. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is the opportunity. Certainly, paid, I'll just use the obvious example. If we instituted paid parking and we had a million dollars worth of income, then it, obviously it changes. Or we find another revenue stream or grant, et cetera. So, or our accommodation tax quadruples because everybody decides to be here. All possible, but this is the model. This is the choice. This Based is, on the information, this is the have. risk. You know, the, all the models have a risk. The risk that we're comfortable taking, whatever that is, we're not there yet because we don't know what the models say yet. I would add to that message: none of them are free. Oh no, they're all painful one way or another. All the tax, you know, it's all tax dollars that either have already accrued or will be accrued in the near future. None of the models are free. The pain point, as far as money concerned, it shifts. Um, I think that needs to be clear. There is no free lunch in the sand renourishment project. <laughs> um, you've either already paid for it or you're going to be paying for it in addition to what we've already collected. So. Um, I think that's an important message because I think they see, oh, good, look, we've got a tax neutral and that's free. No, no, it's not free. It's just money we've already collected. All right, so we are now, I'm going to take some liberties. We're about a half an hour ahead. I don't know if Rose is. Yeah, lunch is ready. So um, let's take whatever you need for lunch. About four hours. <laughs> uh, can we come back at 1230? Yeah. <laughs> lunch is over in the police training room. Okay. For those who would like a free lunch. <laughs> there are no free lunch. Yeah. Watch it later, probably. Good afternoon. We're back from lunch and ready to finish the retreat. <clears throat> so we have a couple of uh, items to accomplish. 
The first, uh, Mr. Kelly will talk about town operation priorities. We'll take a break if we need it. Um, and then a an envisioning uh, OKI's future. So three years out, we'll talk about what we'd like Oak Island to, uh, what are the characteristics we want to experience or see in Oak Island at that point, um, which will give us a target for uh, future efforts. And then we'll do next steps with talking about the budget process, and then we'll be able to adjourn. Madam Mayor, so, yes. pardon me. Uh, just a reminder to our viewers that the internet is shut down. Right, thank you. Yes, yeah, so uh, Town Hall will lose internet service at 1.30 this afternoon, so you will no longer be able to see us, and it'll be out for about 20 minutes. Um, at least that's what's anticipated. So nothing's wrong with your system. Uh, it's a problem here with uh, the Wi-Fi. So you will can anticipate losing us about 1.30. Thanks for the reminder. Mr. Kelly. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, so we're... <coughs> We are, we are getting into the budgetary process. Um, basically, the town uh, staff provides a three-year plan for capital uh, and improvements and personnel. Um, staff has gone through those. Um, we are going to discuss a few of those today. Um, and then during the budget process, you'll be given that as part of your budget book to start with. So then you'll have reference points when we get to each topic be able to go back and look at. Um, the beach uh, items that we need to look at, uh, we have several projects coming in the next three years. Uh, we have the Wilmson Harbor project that we uh, share with uh, the Corps. Um, so that's $3 million that we'll be looking at. Um, you have the Ben Widener project in Lockwood Folly. Um, that is next year. Um, they say it's gonna be in the 23-24. Uh, budget for the core. Um, their cycle is a little bit different than ours, so they call it 23. Uh, so you're looking um, at a million dollars there as well. And then you're looking at the contributions that we have currently with the core, Holden Beach, and the state to keep the uh, Lockwood Folly inlet dredged out. So that's $100,000 a year that you spend for those. Um, so those will be figured into our um, financial plans that we're looking at as well because. Uh, we're not just looking at the one cost. We have to look at the cost of all the activities that we have. Um, the funds, as you know, that we'll be using for those, uh, Mr. Hatton went over those before. Uh, there's only so many funds that we do use for sand, as we all know. Uh, accommodation tax, uh, the three cent, the two cent, uh, the sand tax. And then at the end of the year, uh, as it's been addressed, uh, Fund 47 <coughs> receives all the funds that are left over. So we're always pocketing that money for future projects down the road. Um, the other things that we need to look at is for the stage three contract, you just approved stage two. Uh, stage three contract will be in next year's budget. Uh, we've asked uh, Moffitt Nichols to produce uh, budgetary numbers that we can look at to, for those, so we can put those into the budget, uh, just like we did last year for their numbers. Uh, so they, are, they should have that to us. Last year they gave it to us around May. So it may be a little while before we have that number exactly to be able to provide to you. Um, for the recreation department, um, as we talked about earlier, we have the conceptual drawing that we have looked at. Um, it's a good thing I was sitting down a minute ago when I got EB's um, cost estimate for the uh, project. Um, don't want to shell shock you with that one right this minute, but we're looking at the renovations is about $375,000 uh, for the bathrooms, and then another $200,000, so $500,000 for the renovation of the existing structure. Um, and then the new structure, uh, looking at it, and the items that you addressed earlier about the uh, location and the shape and those kind of things, that was, right now it's just a shale uh, that's given to us, conceptual, uh, just to see what we want. So we'll have to talk with EB after we go to them and say this is what we're adding in next year's budget. Uh, we'd like to see an architectural drawing. We'd like to see uh, the layout, site plans, those kind of things, uh, maybe the road going through to do the parking, and those kind of things. So we'll be working with him on that uh, so we can bring that to you forward for the Recreation Department. 
Um, the other things that we have, if I can get my phone to work since the computer didn't go. Uh, the Cabana, uh, this year's project, um, we've been working with CAMA to get that. We have a grant that expires in September, September uh, that we're working to complete. We're working to apply for another grant for the Cabana as well. Uh, so we can keep improving that area. We put in for a bulkhead, not a bulkhead, a boardwalk along the back side of the dune. Uh, so we're working with CAMA trying to obtain that. We're probably going to ask to have to ask for a variance for that, uh, for that location. So there's things that are in last year's budget that we're still working on trying to get those permitted for this year. Uh, those items will be carried over into the budget next year if we don't get those completed. Um, Mr. Kelly, can I just pause you for a second? Yes, sir. So going back to the rec center, on the rehab side, you're slightly over 500,000. On the new part of it, just so we get a sense of projection here, it's 6,400 square feet times, what's the cost per square foot? So um, 135? I didn't figure it out. He came back with a $2.7 million. Okay. All right, that works too. We don't, we don't have to multiply. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, or I uh, haven't figured that out what it was square foot either. So those are the things that he just sent just a few minutes ago, so we got those numbers. Um, so that includes the architectural drawing, et cetera, that, that and the building? Yeah, that included everything according to the email we received. To get um, to a finished? To the finished product. And that's for the administration, for the uh, permitting um, bid process, writing up the documents, contracts, and those kind of things. Got but it. does not include furniture and equipment, right? No, sir. There's a cost beyond the $2.7 million. That's yes. electrical and plumbing. Uh, that's, that's this building without all these things in it. That's the building. Correct. Right, right. So we would have to be looking at that because we'd have to look at what kind of activities or things we're trying to put in there. So PA system... Um, intercom system, whatever would need to be, uh, security cameras to be able to see from one building to the other building, all those kind of things would need to be looked at. So that would be part of the budgetary process. Well, the fiberglass backboard, parquet floor, and the basketball court? There won't be no um, <laughs> little seal in the middle unless Bill wants to contribute a little bit of money and we can put a little BC in the middle of the uh, basketball court um, for, <laughs> for Bill there. Um, or PR for the parking racks, but we no, it it probably doesn't have the wooden floor. It probably be a multi-purpose floor and those kind of things as well. But uh, we'll we'll get down the nuts and bolts of that later when we start conceptually going a little further. And this is in next year's. We're talking about next year's budget. That'll be, I would say, next year would be renovation, and then the following year would probably be construction of the new building. So we we can say. Conceptually, it's going to be at least three million, yes. at least, and that right off the top. So the whole thing, I'd say, would three point two, three point three count. Are there are there grants available for rec recreation? There, sh there, there should be some grants. Um, like I, I said, we brought in um, Emily again for our grant um, writer, and she's been working with Heather on some other grants, part of grants and those kind of things. Uh, she's also working with us on stormwater grants. Uh, and, and those kind of items. So um, that gives us some time to do some searching and asking and begging and those kind of things, whatever else we can to try to find that money because we understand that the town has other, you know, concerns as well. So if we get the BRIC grant, we will know that in September? You, we should know that. We're hopefully, well, they've said we should know that in June. Okay. I'd, so that, I mean, that's right at the end of the budget cycle, but we should we should know in June. So the money that we had set aside for stormwater, um, the $1.3 million, um, and as we get into the discussion about public safety, those kind of things come up, but um, those monies then could be diverted to something else um, to be able to utilize, I think, 700 and some thousand dollars, the brick grant? Something like that, yeah. Um, We've got another payment coming this summer, right? In June. 1.3. RP, one point. Six, two something. 1.26, something like that. So Can all that. be diverted to the rec center if we already spent it? No, um, it, it's in your hands. Uh, council can direct it uh, for the items that it can be spent on, and then we can earmark things uh, and start a, an account for those line items. Um, we just don't want to stick it somewhere that we can't bring it back, um, right. like into Fund 47. 
Because you stick it there, it never comes back. It never comes so, back. So um, those are the kind of things we have to look at. Uh, and in addressing that, uh, the RF money, um, going into public safety part of it, we've been looking at radios. Uh, 2025, the radio system has to be changed out. Um, fire department, we're buying, I think, eight of them a year. Um, eight of them a year currently uh, to sort of level the cost out. Uh, police department, we looked at, we were buying them closer to the end, so we didn't want older units. When we got it, we didn't want them to be five years old. Um, so those are the kind of things that we can buy with that money um, that we will reduce the cost on to the taxpayer if we could use those monies so we don't have to pay for the radios and those kind of items. And there, and there are expensive items. Um, it'd be for the police and for the fire. So in the um, for the police side of it, um, you're talking about radios um, and body cameras. The body cameras that we're looking at, uh, as we said, for recruitment, and we talked about this in the last few days uh, with our interviews, uh, equipment makes a difference. Um, so we're looking at upgrading some of our body cameras and car cameras um, to new items. And you're looking at buying, you had to buy 30 of those for everybody. So, I mean, that's $256,000. Um, so those kind of things are large items that we can utilize some of that RF money for instead of putting it back into the tax base. Um, then you have the portable radios, $200,000. Uh, taser replacement, $75,000. So there's some large items out there that could be deferred with that money if, it, if that's how we so choose fit later during the budget process. Um, but those are the kind of things then in the fire department, <coughs> Uh, the radios, you have the turnout gear. We try to buy some of you turnout gear every year so we don't have to buy all of them at one time. And they rotate those things out. But in the fire department, the thing you have to look at coming next year, you have, um, it's time to replace the engines again. Um, we bought the last engines from uh, Myrtle Beach. Worked out well for us. Mr. Hatton worked a finance plan out. Uh, so we were able to finance those over a few years. Uh, and that's the same thing we're looking at doing with the um, new trucks that we would need to bring in for those. Um, Mr. Hatton's already reached out to the finance company and sort of talked to them about those so, so we can get some preliminary numbers on what market is and those kind of things. The question that Myrtle Beach hasn't answered yet, they're looking at either leasing or purchasing themselves. If they go to a purchase, then um, we would have two trucks this year, two trucks next year, because they wouldn't want to buy four at one time, four new ones, million and some dollars a piece. Uh, they would look at staggering theirs also. So then we would have two this year and two next year opportunity to purchase. Um, so there's still a little bit of uncertainty there on their part and our part on what we'll be able to do. But we have it in the uh, plan for us to be able to uh, lay that out and show you a number. I mean, the number you're talking about is $1.5 million. Uh, for two that, trucks? For four trucks. If we got all four of them in one year, it'd be one, the $1.5 million. Um, what was but, the fire department's entire budget last year? But we wouldn't be, we'd be financing those. So it's not a burden of $1.5 million this year. Right. It'd be the 500, 500, 500. But what you have to start looking at is the domino effect. Because next year you're looking at buying the ladder truck. Uh, we bought one this year. We got to buy another one next year. Um, and then we would have one more truck that we got to replace. Um, and then you would see how fast other things develop across the bridge. So, I mean, you have another possibility of having another million dollars next year added on to you as well. So then you have a loan on top of a loan. And it's just something we have to look at going forward to see how thin we get stretched out. So um, what about the emergency response vehicle that was discussed? Is that in this year's budget? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. so, so what is that, about 45? <laughs> Close to 2.8 million. And that's with no... Uh, Purchases. The capital outlay that was budgeted was five hundred thirty-nine thousand last year. Five thirty-nine, and then they bought that truck mm -hmm. through Chicago and Alabama. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hatton, if we go back for a minute, um, given where interest rates are projected to go, uh, should we be considering financing the rec center sooner as opposed to later? It would be a possibility I would think we might want to look at. Yeah, I think so. Some numbers. Because, okay. I mean, the Wall Street is saying a quarter point, but it could easily be a half with record-breaking inflation, and those numbers are likely to go up 
on a gradual basis as the Fed raises rates, this might be the time to consider. Right. I tried to reach out to the financing guy for the fire trucks at lunchtime when I went over it. I couldn't catch him just to see okay. where he was. That was going to be my next question is what's the going rate today? I'm going to try to get him again this afternoon. Thank you. I was hoping to find him at lunch, but I couldn't. I think we need to look closely at that, very closely. So rates are only going one direction. We know that. True. Um, so those are the sort of the departments that y'all had figured in your one, two, three. So, Bill, like I told you, we finally get into some expenditure items that let's go ahead and be addressed and looked at. Um, but these are, again, these are just capital items that we're looking at. Um, also, the things that you looked at or have been discussed, police department, when y'all talked with them the other day, they said, you know, we could add one person per shift, blah, 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 what we need to look at. Um, by doing that, if you added one officer, uh, you're looking at the uh, salary and benefits. Um, that's $235,000. Um, for three officers. For four officers. Four officers. Yes, ma'am. And that is just the salary and benefits. And as you know, then we got to put them in uniform, get them a police car, radios, turn out gear, everything, uh, safety vests and all that kind of stuff then would have to come in. Uh, fire number department. number again? Yes, ma'am. What was that number again? 235476 for, for, for four, before you get to their... Before you get to just... Plus. That's just getting him in the door. Yeah. That's sixty th Roughly 60000 apiece. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, fire department, um, when Chris came and talked to the paramedic that we were trying to get so we reduced the load on station number one so we'd have uh, the uh, firemen still at station one instead of having to bring three over to two and having to shift people around every time a call came out. That way the, the department would be able to handle two calls at one time without being depleted. Um, that would be bringing in three firemen, uh, and the total cost of it is $158,907. That's just employees in the door. Uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the, the police number is on the low end, right? So if you hired for 40, Benny's 20, pen, Benny's and pension 2025, equipment, uniforms, I mean, you're at 80. Per, per person? Yeah. You're close to $100,000 in the oh, Okay. So that's $400,000 in, in officers. Yes. Does that include the vehicles? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because the vehicles. So, so, Bill, that number, 60 is not a number. It's, yeah. Just so we're all t talking apples. Yeah. The vehicles you're looking at is $220,000. And just the salaries is two hundred and thirty-five. So vehicles are leased. No, purchased. So are we selling vehicles and replacing? We um, we have a we started a replacement program three years ago that was showing the uh, three-year plan. Um, we identify the vehicles that are to be replaced. Once they come in, then Rose takes them. Uh, town declares them a surplus. Then we put them out on for auction. And then they, they're sold. And that's ongoing every year pretty much, though. Yes, sir. And that offsets the cost of the new... It goes back in the general fund. Yes. Um, the problem that we've had since the uh, pandemic came around is the getting a vehicle. Uh, we've put in and we've canceled. We've put in, we've canceled, or they've canceled. Or um, The only way you can lock something in is if they give you a VIN number. And so now we require a VIN number because then that guarantees us that vehicle. Uh, we have two police cars... So it sort of it threw back the whole town from public works to streets to water, everybody. We're waiting on trucks right this minute. Uh, so when you get the when you get this in, in a few weeks, you'll you'll see the little asterisks. And the asterisks mean we're waiting on the vehicle to be delivered. Uh, Mr. Hatton's already got the POs, everything's already encumbered. Um, the dollars have been spent. We just haven't we don't have the delivery. Um, so those things have, have been ongoing. Uh, some items, uh, the dump truck for uh, stormwater this year we just didn't purchase because we couldn't get a guarantee on it we kept waiting we kept waiting never could get anything so we said we would just carry it over to next year I mean at some point you look and you're not getting it before June 30th um, and you don't know when you're going to get it so we just pulled that back out and stuck it for next year so uh, let's go back for a moment for my new colleagues edification if nothing else at one point, we were talking about using a lease strategy for these police cars, correct? Correct. What happened to that? Why are we buying them, not leasing them? 
I think it, it was four years ago, and we had them on a three-year lease. So all the, those leases have run out this year. Okay. What are we? That's why? A, why are we buying, not leasing again? Is my point. There's a possibility we could, if you choose to. Well, I mean, I would say whatever is cost-effective, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. at the we, end of the day, out, a, yeah. After y'all discussed it last time, we went out to Enterprise. That was the group that has, does the most leases around here. Um, they couldn't guarantee us a vehicle because we were we were not in the system yet. We could get in the system. It'd be a, a almost a twenty to twenty four month layover before we get a vehicle because they had to surplus everybody else first. Um, when he contacted us again this year, there was no guarantee that we would get a vehicle again this year. So that's why we looked at what we did. But everything that we do, we can look at a finance option to see what everything is. It's it's not, what we're talking about today didn't say that we were, we're going to buy it outright. Yes, that's what it's going to cost. But no, if council says we need to start looking, but once we start financing everything, we lay everything else on finances too. So now you got all these dollars adding up on dollars that you're going to have to make sure that we carry out. So everything on, laying on top of each other, same project, whatever it is, it, all those numbers are known numbers that we're passing to someone else. Oh, fair enough. But from a strategic point of view, if leasing is cost saving them, and that's what we should be doing, if because of the supply line, supply chain problems, we can't lease, we have to buy. That's that's a contingency this year, but on a long term basis. Probably, I would have to argue that leasing is going to be more cost effective. Talk, yeah, talking with the enterprise leasing of police cars, they, they he said there's no money in that for us on that part. Leasing of pickup trucks and all the other departments, he said that that would be his okay. highest recommendation. Right. So they're a special case because of their yeah. just mark because, outs and their equipment. Yeah. Just because you got to put so much in a police car, you got to put the okay. cage, you got to put the radio, but everything else, pickup truck wise, lease would be the option. Because Councilman Blaylock and I have been through five years of vehicle fleet and replacement, and I need to know that we're on a schedule and we're doing it in the most cost-effective way. And if you recall, initially when we went to the leasing four years ago, it was because we had to buy so many fire, uh, police cars yeah. in that one year because yeah. they had not chose to We were running a ghost any. fleet. Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Because we never put any money into replacement right. on an orderly basis. Right. Okay. So you bought you bought ten vehicles in that one in year. One year, and then you've been. I, I think I remember that discussion, and you've been buying every year since yes. and catching back up. Yes, sir. Yep. And we have a program laid out for the um, next six years to stay at Brown Hall. And that's marked and unmarked vehicles. So we we rotate through. Um, the unmarked and marked. The unmarked is not getting as much mileage and it rotates back into patrol. And, and so we've been looking at it both ways on that side. Um, some other positions have been discussed, um, heard during the election campaign, because we hear that quite often. Um, just not kidding. This is just, <laughs> it was pick on Mark Day. He's been down here picking on me. <laughs> so, so, so yes. Um, we, development services. Uh, we know that... Um, Four months waiting on a building permit is too long, um, but that's the best we can do right this minute with how many people we have and the, and the growth that continues and the number of permits coming in on a daily basis. And we still got to get out there and do the inspections because we're not enforcing enough. Um, so to do that, it's going to take personnel. Um, everything that we're doing is has been discussed on the floor already uh, that we're looking at because we took the directions from what council had talked about. So adding people into development services and. At least numbers, you'll get them again later. Um, but it's $101,000. So, and again, that's just the person. Um, one of the positions we require a truck. Uh, the other one just requires office space and computers. So those that's things are also... Positions. That's, that's two, two positions. That's two positions. And that permit specialist, uh, that's somebody who'll be receiving the permits, trying to get the permits back out in a timely manner. And then a zoning technician with the number of violations. Because you see in the report, we're, we're not gain. I mean... We're just holding our own. We're not gaining anything. Right. We're actually probably going a little bit in reverse. Um, and when summer gets here, it picks up even a little bit more because then people are out in the yards finally and they're starting to see what the neighbors are doing and that's when all the violations come in. And then the neighbor, you know, complains about the other neighbor and we get going. So are we going to revisit their fee schedule? Because if I recall, some of those fees were pretty low. 
Well, the, yes, ma'am. The fee schedule is part of the uh, adoption process as well. You adopt that same time um, at the very end with the budget. The fees that we're having to look at this year, you, you need to address um, stormwater as an enterprise fund. Uh, we know that we haven't um, accomplished everything that we want to do in stormwater over the last five years. We know when the heavy rains come, we're flooding, uh, putting water into certain places that we need to look at to try to better ourselves on that. Uh, the ditch cleaning and those kind of things. So looking at that requires staff on that as well. We only have the three people. We separated the departments out. It used to be in public works. Right. Uh, two years ago, council said, gave us direction. We separated it. We started a stormwater fund. Um, we started putting capital money back to be able to buy their equipment. Um, and, and that's been working. Uh, the fees have been working. We brought in a stormwater administrator this year. Having him here, he's starting to see other things that we need to be addressing um, and, and some changes that need to be made. And some of the fees currently, as Mr. Hatton was finding yesterday, uh, a lot of his fees are being collected by development services. Uh, that's just because that's where it used to be. Uh, and it's time to separate these things. And Rick's been working with us, trying to itemize each little thing, what we can take out and put over back into stormwater because we need stormwater to pay for itself, enterprise fund, uh, and those kind of things. So adding the people, um, as we discussed with him yesterday, we may not be able to add a full staff, but we may be able to add one or two people to be able to see, or does he need another person in the field doing inspections plan reviews, those kind of things to make sure we keep the process moving. Uh, and so that's something we'll have to work through during the budget cycle uh, to see uh, what fees we can change, what fees we can generate, uh, increase of fees, decrease of fees throughout the board, whatever it is, and see what we can generate within the stormwater department to see what we can support on the other side, on the improvements on his side. Right. Um Leave anything on it? Well, we've requested of all the department heads that are associated with fees to review them closely. And when, when they come back before the council with their budgets, we want to possibly t talk about any fees that they feel they can either eliminate or increase, decrease, whatever. So we're trying to make an effort to have them look at them because they're the ones that are more you know, familiar with them. So what's the lens they use for that? Do they see what other towns are charging? Do they yes, mm -hmm. weigh that against what their expenses, their operations expenses are? Um, yeah, he went ahead and yeah, pulled uh, some local communities. Uh, we try to go by the communities the same size we are in coastal areas and look at those kind of things. Um, and then you look at uh, city of Wilmington, what they're charging, which they get these prices. Um, like the Williamson track development, if we went right now, if we permitted that, they they pay us a thousand dollars for some stormwater fees, <laughs> and uh, and we know that's a pretty large project. Um, if you were in Wilmington, they'd be paying a million dollars. So it, it's a big it's a big differential that we've never had these kind of magnitude things come in, and it, it's time for us to start looking at magnitude of what we need to do to be able to do what we do. And the Williamson track. Uh, and Councilman Brock brought up a few things that we need to readdress in the agreement. But right. the other thing is we need to start looking at and, and is what are we going to be responsible for? The homeowner associations, are they going to be doing the yard debris? Are they going to be picking up this? Or are we going to be picking it up? Are they going to be part of our trash customers? Or are they going to contract out with Great uh, Green for Life themselves? Or those kind of things. So well, We just pass those expenses through. Right? We do. But so in some areas, we don't provide recycling because they don't pick up. Well, I'm sure they would pick up in this area, but it's just a thing that we need to, at some point, lay out to figure out what we're going to do so then we can see what kind of staffing or whatever fees that we're going to need to be able to charge in the future, too, to recoup our cost on the other side. The thing that sticks in my mind is how low our permit fees are, um, given the demand, right? So... Um, anywhere we have an opportunity, they're not cutting their prices on the other end. No, they're not. Not by any stretch. And if we have an opportunity to offset the expenses of actually doing the inspections that yield the permits, we should make every effort to do that. So um, this is an annual conundrum when you have a budget, right? Department heads always need more, more people, more equipment. It's, it's not unusual. What is different this time with the advent of Williamson and Pine Forest 
and whatever that initial development is, L Rock, whatever, we clearly are going to have an increased need in the future. So what I would ask management to do is to begin now to think about a strategic plan for public services because, as we heard in the interview the other day, for every 1,000 residents, 2.5 policemen are required. So we already know that, um, and fire, and so on. We can't afford to buy them all at once. We've got to spread that cost over the future using the best projections we can. When I would argue again, we need to start doing it now. Now's the time before it really gets untracked, and then we're behind the eight ball again. So that may be unpleasant news to some folks, but it's, it's necessary. And, the, and there's a cost. Every cop is 80,000 bucks, 100,000 bucks, and so on. Um, not all these needs can be equally pri prioritized. So for Bill, I know Mark's been through this before. And it's going to be a difficult set of choices. And the other thing is the campaign's over. So I don't care what anyone promised. These, now we're down to hard tax. Only so many people make the roster bill. That's the way this right. is going to work. Right? Even though they're all legitimate requests. I have no doubt about that. But we're just not going to fund that. It's not going to happen. An offsetting thought um, in that regard is I have gained an appreciation for how thinly staffed we are. And it shows up in terms of our inability to provide services. And so I, it's a balance that we've got to find, I think. Yes. But toward, you know, to that point, we are lean and, and relatively flat as an organization. I'd like to think it was by design, maybe part design, part neglect. But whatever the cause of that, as we look to the future, we see only growth. We, we see greater demand for services. I mean, we can't avoid that. We need to start thinking about it now. It's, it's not going to go away. Oh, I'm not discounting that at all. Uh, I mean, we're, we're lean, but that's not, maybe not lean. for the right reasons, you know, that we should have had more, but we don't. No, but I think just, my point was that I think we need to appreciate how thinly staffed we are, and I question whether we are staffed sufficiently to provide the services we've even promised. So I'm not even, look. yes, I agree, mm -hmm. we need to build up for what's coming, but I'm looking at today. Present, and, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. I yeah, mean, when yeah. you only have three policemen on patrol in a 10-mile island with the kind of traffic and density we have, that's Currently. problematic. Currently. Assuming, assuming they're all here. Assuming they're, yes, and of not, course, assuming they're all here. And not in court or... Yeah. Someplace like that, because... I defer to your expertise, sir. We're understaffed, there's no doubt. Yes. Now, and I think you're right, Madam Mayor, but we will be woefully understaffed if we don't start doing something. That, that, well, that was my point. Yeah. When you were talking about the fee structures on, on different things, I remember Mr. Edwards saying we only charge a one-time business license fee and we don't charge an annual fee. Are you giving thought to that going sure. forward? We have looked at our, what we can do uh, state-wise, legislative-wise, uh, and we'll be presenting that during the budget process for things to look at, plus the one that Councilman Martin brought up today uh, to see what that is on the special tax um, and, and those kind of things. And then also ask again about where our food tax is back out there to Isler and see what's up with that. And So we, we'll be able to bring a few of those little things back to you as well. But on the fee schedule, I mean, we have a, a half a meeting that we're just going to talk about fees. Good. Um, Good. And during each each group, uh, um, we'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, we'll tell you what we're looking at increasing. Brunswick County uh, went up last year on the water rates. We absorbed some of it. Uh, we have to, you know, finish it this year. Um, we, Mr. Hatton, uh, broke out different funds each year. For the last few years, we've tried to make sure that each fund is self-sufficient. Uh, and what it cost, and I, I believe we're getting closer on those. Um, sewer, water, um, we don't see any kind of fees on those increasing unless the county decides to charge us more for that water plant. I uh, hope they don't, uh, but we'll see what they do about that. Um, but um, developmental fees, those kind of fee fees, stormwater, um, those are things we have to be looking at. Rec department. Uh, as we've talked about before, we'll look at those fees again to see if we're getting enough 
the par three, I think we've raised those almost to a limit. Um, we can't, you can't charge but so much. Right. Um, so those kind of things we have to look at as well. We can't overprice ourselves. Um, par and, three, we just need to make it attractive enough that more people will go, go and pay. Yeah, increase volume. We need to make, just make it attractive. <clears throat> Well, those, those are the kind of things that um, that we've talked about the top three priorities, the public safety, recreation, and beach, uh, that we still need to make sure that we keep on the forefront uh, and bring back to you. Uh, the rest of them are the uh, secondary positions that we've talked about in council and other meetings that said we needed. Uh, the other things we're looking at is uh, Green Man's contract. It'll go out for a proposal again this year. That's our uh, right away grass cutting, those kind of things. Um, Scott brought in a proposal uh, to Hatton and I about the department taking it back over uh, and what it would take to bring it back in to, to have a little bit more town pride in it and keep it a little bit cleaner and keep it greener and, and those things. Um, I'm not bashing green men or anything, but uh, I believe we could do a little bit better service around town hall, keep it a little cleaner. Uh, Middleton Park, we keep throwing more and more improvements out there, so we need to highlight that spot instead of having all the weeds and dandelions growing up in it. Um, then we got the skate park coming on, so we're going to be maintaining that area. So I believe it is something to look at, and, and you'll see that coming up in the budget, us looking at bringing some of that back. Not all of it, but uh, some of it around main, or main buildings, like the rec department would be another one that we would maintain internally. So those will be, uh, that's, that'll be discussed as well. Are there any additional costs that we're anticipating for the skate park? Or does the 325, I know there was a, a discussion at the meeting that I attended that we can either increase the footprint of what the architect's design is and perhaps add additional features or keep the existing footprint, in which case, if I understood correctly, the monies would not, it, it, it would be something short of the 325 that's budgeted. Yeah. Heather said she she hasn't gotten the, after the meeting, she hasn't gotten the, those drawings yet. Um, so she's still waiting on some of that to come in so we can see the price differentials. Uh, so hopefully she knows we need that during the budgetary process. Um, but we can look at that and see what it is going forward. Um, one of the reasons we had Heather and the, the grant lady come in the other day, we were talking about the bathroom facility for that in the Middleton Park and um, the skate park to be utilized. Uh, and see what kind of grants out there for a restroom facility. Some, something simple, nothing fancy. Um, so when you go to look at the sidewalks, yes, it's curved around the backstop and stuff like that, but it was there for a reason so we could save the footprint, footprint for the bathroom. Um, so we are trying to plan things out and plan things ahead, um, but we'll have to get some prices on that when we're seeing what kind of grants. Um, and the applications for those go all the way up to August. Uh, so we won't know about those until later if we apply or don't apply or right. what we can get. So there may be some money in the budget next year for that one bathroom as well uh, on the recreation side. Um, because looking at the where the skate park location is, we looked at we could add the footprint, but we didn't want to go into the parking lot because we wanted to make sure we had enough parking for the facility. So that's why we didn't want to put the bathroom facility there. On that side. And that's why we brought it back to the other corner. Thank you. Those are the highlights. <laughs> Each department has something. And like I said, the, the three-year capital plan, um, it's something that we started two years ago. Um, it's working for us. Um, that way staff knows, we know, we see what their projections are. We may need to buy this piece of equipment before that piece of equipment, so those things may change around. But it's keeping, it's keeping the um, department heads more active in the future planning instead of just planning for right this moment. They know what we're looking at two years down the road. That's excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Um, on the water and sewer. Water, we've been doing improvements to the system, hydrant, uh, flushing and those kind of things. Some people ask what the little blue boxes were. Um, those are their flushing mechanisms, so they come on in a timely manner to make sure we have chemical and stuff into chemical and pressure into the system to move the stale water. Um, on the wastewater side this year, We've had um, a SCADA system which calls us out, tells us whatever's wrong, power out, um, electrical component, something's high water, anything like that. 
But we also, for some unknown reason, they installed an alarm system into this, into all our back stations. And we have been babying it, um, keeping it alive uh, this whole time, and it's time to uh, kick that can down the road and switch over to the SCADA system as we needed to. So that is a, a cost within that department, but it's being able to be absorbed by some monies that we've been putting back over the last few years. Um, but that's that's one of the highest items that's within the utility fund. But as you said, will that does it? That has a zero budget impact. Has a zero effect. Yeah, and in the three-year plan, it's broken out that way. You see anything that affects the tax base, and it's a moving number. Um, it's not the scare tactic or anything like that, but you'll see it as a moving number on the bottom. It tells you what a penny is. And then as we get closer, Mr. Hatton will give you what the what penny we're going to use for the budgetary process. Um, he'll lock it down eventually, and that, that'll be the what it is because um, he tries to make sure he's using the latest, day, latest data as well. Um, so that goes forward, but in these spreadsheets, you'll see what a penny is. You'll see what's in front of you, and you'll see what it costs. So don't don't get scared by that because that's, that's whole numbers. <laughs> and as Councilman Bach addressed... <laughs> These are just items that needs to be gone through, collated, figured out what we need to do and how we're gonna lay it out to the future. Also on the water and wastewater side, Mr. Kelly and I have gotten with the department heads for those two departments and we've told them to go ahead based on what they tell us about the lead time, like for valve pits, meters, piping and that sort of thing. We said, go ahead and get that stuff, you know, get it purchased now. We know, we'll do a PO and encumber the money for it. At least we're in the system to try to get, because that'd be the worst thing to tell a builder, you know, you can't build because we don't have a meter for you or a valve pit. Right. Now you're talking about some of the equipment, um, nine months. Uh, wow. we're, we're still waiting on orders from um, back in spring of last year. Um, and we're all going through the same thing. We work uh, closely with the county. We have the same system they have, same electronic read system. Uh, Ocean Isle has the same electronics. So we all sort of bank that kind of stuff. And we've all tried to keep some kind of inventory in case something is needed. Um, but we try to make sure that we have three of everything that we need for our emergency side. And then the regular side, just getting the uh, meters is getting hard to do just for single family houses. So, so we're building inventory to accommodate what the number of building permits we're anticipating Yes, so when you see the it's inventory the sheet that we give to the auditor, we used to, we used not to have a big stockpile. I mean, we don't have it right this minute because we can't get it, but we're trying to build a stockpile. So when Mr. Hatton sends the inventory sheet out and he starts screaming at them again because they have all this stuff sitting on the floor, um, he'll hopefully remember why he told them to have it sitting on the floor. And we, we can get by that and the auditor will know why we went ahead and purchased these items because of the conditions that we're in. So what, where do we stand on this year's budget? Um, is there monies we can carry over? Uh, there, or are we spending it all? I'll speak and then I'll let him speak because he's okay. the one who's going to pinch the penny. Um, we're just by the nature of what's going on right this minute. Um, the departments have learned that summertime's coming and we have like three different periods that we look for. We spend money at the beginning of the budget cycle to get what we need for the fall. And then when the fall gets here, we start spending what we need to get us to the spring. And then we hope nothing else broke or nothing needed to repair, no major catastrophes happen. Then we start looking at what we need to spend to get ready for the season. And then we try to hold some reserve because the season starts before our budget ends. And Mr. Hatton puts a freeze on them at some point and says, hey, end of April, you don't get to spend any more money unless it's signed off by him. Um, so those are the kind of budget cycles that we have to lay out for. Because water and sewer, um, you hope nothing, no main or anything happens, or we hope we don't total a police car. We hope we don't, you know, fire truck got us last year for a few times. The hydraulic system kept going out. So those are the kind of expenses that you don't have in the budget that now Mr. Hatton's got to maneuver monies around to be able to get that. So we try not to load you down with a bunch of budget amendments, uh, last week in June or the first week of July. Um, but Hatton pretty much keeps that in line. But as far as department heads, they have a, like three different budget cycles that they go through during the year for their purchasing. And it's still the same way. 
And then Mr. Hatton over here gets all excited because he looks and he sees how much money they currently have, but he knows in the next 30 days he's going to come to my office and say, I can't believe he's spending that now. Well, he's spending that now. He could have bought that in July, Hatton, but he tried to make sure that he had money to finish the year so you wouldn't have got on him the other way as well. But uh, it, it's a good checks and balance that we have, and the department heads have been here long enough now that they know uh, how Mr. Hatton is and how I am, so um, it, it's worked out well, and whatever money is left, uh, Mr. Hatton makes sure that it, it rolls over to the appropriate accounts, and, and you'll see that every year when you start seeing the, ex you'll see what the fund balance was one month, and then you'll see us going the next year, and Mr. Hatton has accordingly put the money where he needed to, so um, go ahead. One of the, well, like for example, David was saying, if you would look at what we have spent uh, paid Brunswick County for water and for wastewater service at this point you'd go well you budgeted a whole lot more money but then if you look at it again in another three months at the end of June you go whoa you know because it the next three months it just goes wild I mean it just climbs obviously when the people get here in April May June and we start out strong with July August September and all of a sudden it'll go back down so the, in the utility department is the ones that really go up and down. The other departments, fairly steady. Developmental services are steady. Taxes are close to December, January, big, big months. Fire fees come in quarterly. So. You don't talk about fire fees. You don't tell them about the fire fees. We can. I don't know a whole lot about it yet. But. So last year we went up 20% on fire fees mm -hmm. to help some of the cost. We could have gone up 60. But so, me and Mr. Hatton thought we put in place <laughs> the whole 60, and council took action 20, 20, 20. Um, that wasn't what the motion was. The motion was to go ahead and raise the current year that we're in 20, 20%. So, um, we'll probably be bringing that back to you again for the other 20%. And if you would like to take action wherein the motion says, but could we do that for the two year? Or do we do it because of individual budget years? Individual budget. So you won't be able to do that again, and we'll have to come back the following year and ask for the last 20. And when we give you that proposal of what the 20% is, I'll also provide you with a tax equivalent of what that would mean in property taxes. So I just don't throw that out there to you. And so you'll see what the yeah. equivalent is if you property tax. If you raise the fire fee this much, this is what the equivalent that you take what to the property tax on. To, it's, an, it's apportioned according to the property tax. And there's a cap that you can put on there. Um, and Lisa? Yes, sir. Did, uh, did this council appoint anybody to take Loman's spot for the fire? No. So um, council will need to appoint a person to meet. The, the fire department will contact us and say the county's coming to talk to us about fire fees. Um, they'll have a county representative there. I think Ms. Sykes is the one. I mean, not Sykes, but... Uh, Who's our, who's our lady? Pat Sykes. Pat, Pat Sykes. Pat Sykes. Yeah, it is Sykes. <laughs> yeah, Pat Sykes. Um, she'll be there. Uh, and then we discuss what we're wanting to do and what we're looking at. Um, then council approves it. Then it goes to their board for their approval, and they have to approve your, they have to approve your approval. And at that point, then it comes active. So you all need to appoint somebody for that. How quickly does that come up? Do they need to come to a consensus today? Maybe to... It'll come up. I mean, Chris already told me it's, they've already asked what we were doing because um, they they need it for their budgetary process too. Um, but I think last year we did it in probably April because we didn't take action on it until way later, but the meeting was in April. So this is someone to represent the town? And you're speaking on the town's behalf. We go, we, we present what our estimated budget is, what we believe our budget's going to be for next year right. for the fire department. Um, we tell them how we're securing our funds, tax base, fire fees, um, and then they look at it and we tell them why we're wanting the 20% increase is to, to lower the burden on the tax other side. It's a tax. Right. It's a tax. Um, but you explain that, uh, and then um, the staff doesn't vote. Um, whoever's appointed is our legal person. They, they would vote. Chris votes because he's on the fire thing. They bring a, a fire marshal with them the elected official, and then one person from EMS, I don't, I don't know who that'll be this year, 
But the, you five people vote to see if you agree with what the town presented. Mm -hmm. And then after that, then the one person presents it to the county as a whole, and then they vote on each township what they're wanting to do. Because the county may come in, because they did that the first year, I think. They came in and raised everybody's 25% because they were getting money in the rural areas. So the way they did that was to raise everybody's. So. They'll Mr. probably ask for the fire department budget sometime in April. We give it to them, you know, about two, more, two months ahead of what it's really going to be. And if there's any major changes to it, then I would have to let them know. But, you know, they're looking at it for their budgeting process, too. Okay. It's still early, but... Mr. Hatton, I'm, I want to change the subject for just a moment since we're talking about the, the county. As you undoubtedly know, the county was defrauded out of millions of dollars, major financial breach, a, a pitching scheme. Yes, sir. Have we... Have, we've checked all our security systems, right? And we're confident that can't happen here. I want to knock on wood that it doesn't happen. <laughs> but uh, I don't want to sit here and say it couldn't happen. You know? no, I understand. But you've got it firewalled in a VPN, right? It's well, going to be. The reason that the system is down was down, and hopefully it's back up for this 15 minutes. Hooks was updating the firewall. Okay. When I made a joke with to keep the Russians out. So I don't know. Now we had learned from the county. The county had brought this to everybody's attention months ago. Yeah. And told us about the scam where the email from T.A. Loving came in. Yeah, it was an employee error, right, ultimately. Right. That's what I'm concerned about, that our employees are extremely sensitive to that, not opening things. We only, have, we only have one person who entered a bank account. Okay. <laughs> and that's Mr. Hatton, I presume? <laughs> okay. On the VPN numbers, when you're, you're the one putting the money in the bank account. And paying contractors, et cetera. <laughs> well, no, it's... We're in good hands. <laughs> well, it's not unusual. It's still, to a certain degree, shocking that it went oh, on what? that long. They didn't catch it. Their internal controls were weak. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll well, stop, we went I'll stop a, there. Yeah, we went to a class. In the legal. And it, they showed you how simple this is. And somebody would copy Mark Martin's email address and send it to me. And say, hey, David, you know, could you forward this information? You sent me a document the other day. And I looked at my email, and well, well, damn it, why'd he lose it for? You know, I'll send it to him again. Well, I didn't send it to him. It was somebody copying his last email. So now I sent that person a link to get into me because I sent them a file. So now when they open that file, they have access into ours. So then that's how it originated. But then that other person, when it went one step further, then they, once they got in, they said, oh, we've got. David hooked. So then we'll just say we're so and so. We'll change your account number, and so it's simple. Understood. I just and want to make sure that we hooks we are exercising every precaution. If, is, if is an employee point. gets a strange email, Hooks will stop it, and it'll come up and tell you, "Do not open this. This is phishing." Or you know, I'm sure they got their list of thank you companies and people out there that do that sort of thing. And this year. Just as you know, two years ago, we had an audit done by Hooks. And this is the year that we go back and ask them for our internal audit over all our software again. So, yeah, they went through our old system. But that's, Mayor, that's, uh, in council, that's, that's sort of the highlight kind of things. Uh, there's many things in here to, to look at and to, to look through. Um, we don't look at these as wish lists. These are things that we weighed out, and these are the items that have been looked at and brought forward. The other items, um, the things that we look at, these are items that can be looked at a third of it this year, a third of it next year, you know, look at it those kind of ways. Um, but we didn't put anything into this that we don't believe that at some point we need. Are there other projects ongoing maintenance like... Um, well, I know we're still working on sidewalks. Uh, if we don't get them finished, you know, that money will transfer over. But in terms of roads and just operational expenses of maintaining the town as it is, yeah. infrastructure. Always constant maintenance of the beach accesses. That's yeah. ongoing. 
right. every single so, year. That's, that also turns in capital improvement plans. So you have those kind of things, uh, the beach, the wooden structures on the yacht drive, um, the walkways, 9th, 20th, and whatever. Um, those are within the budget. And, and capital improvement plans are things beyond what the normal operation budget is. Um, so the, the few of those are sort of the ones you talked about. The sidewalk plan, that was an improvement plan. Um, Park and Rec's, the, the building was in her operational budget, um, but it was underneath improvement. So you'll see that in the budgetary, there'll be, Mr. Hatton lays everything out. Anything improvement okay. goes to a line item improvement and he lays out what it is verbiage and then he shows you a dollar amount. And then, because uh, he has a Word document that goes along with the Excel document, the math document. Um, so you'll see what it is, verbiage-wise, what that covers on each thing. Um, because over the last few years, we've tried to make it idiot-proof on me and him so we know what each other's talking about when we read one line item. Okay, it says we're buying 24 water meters, and the water meters cost this for three-quarter inch. Um, Mr. Hatton's got to go to a training, and this is what it's going to cost. And, uh, and everything we've tried to do, we've tried to break down and explain. Some of them are repeat things, fuel. Uh, we don't right. say we buy 10,000 gallons of fuel for this. We don't say that. Um, it'll be a fuel cost, and you can look. Because the, the way the budget's laid out, you have previous years as well. So you'll see where we're at and what we've done, and you'll see what increase or decrease we've done in the budget. Uh, the last budgets that we've gone through, you can look through the budgets, and you'll see that the numbers are very similar. I mean, there may be $100 less here, maybe $100 more there. But we've tried to keep things tight over the last few years. Um, just because of where we're at and we knew where we had to go. Um, but at some point, uh, as y'all have addressed, uh, you get to the end of the curve and you need to make adjustments or it's time for the town to grow. All these expenses going forward, police cars and, and equipment and all that, do you enter in the growth projections to offset some of those costs two and three years from now or how do you address that? That's, we not, don't, yeah. Not really, I'd, because state law, you know, I will, we'll get our tax value from Brunswick County, and that's what we will base our taxes for this town based on our tax rate. Of course, Brunswick County knows what it is. So, uh, yeah, I would love to be able to say, well, this is what they're telling me it is, but I really know that it's going to be this. I can't make that assumption. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't know what type houses are going to be built or commercial building or what have you so, so in that i'd line, be put in jail for doing that i got you sir <laughs> that that line of thinking though uh you're probably on the low end of cost versus outlay because there would be more money coming in that you can't account right. for right now because you don't have the number well everything you know on the capital outlay side if mr hatton i mean the quotes that come in we get quotes on everything uh, Mr. Hatton's presented a quote for $40,000 for a pickup truck F-150 for this year. Uh, we'll look at whatever the growth pattern is and give us the estimates for the next year and the next year off this year's quotes. Yeah. But as far as the tax base, when we start looking at homes that we're absorbing, and I've told you all, we're, we're very conservative our number. Um, when people say, oh, you built 400 homes. Well, I, that's great. Glad we did. But uh, we only budgeted for 100. So, yes, at the end of the day, we did have 300 homes that we did not budget for for income, but that income goes back into the general fund or to the final account. So it was an increase, but it was an increase that is above and beyond what you had budgeted for. Right, right. Which we'll get the benefit of in the next years as they become you know, tax base. With you. Gotcha. Right. Well, aside from we don't want you to go to prison, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Budgeting based on projections can be disastrous yes, if you get it so. wrong. Let me just point out the obvious here. Right. You assume year over year growth or you assume a number and it doesn't come through and you're actually budgeted that way, you're in trouble. I don't yeah. do it. But you're in jail and we're in trouble. Well, that's where that goes. <laughs> but, because all the tax values and everything, the reason I couldn't use the future, that all, I have to report every bit of that on a report to this uh, state treasurer's office. If there's something on there that they think doesn't look right, I will hear from them. They'll say, would you verify this number? And then you'll do that and say, yes, this is what it I is. I was just I wondering how you got to the numbers. And I'm, I understand. Yeah. 
And, and you'll be able to tell that when we go through. Yeah. Um, there's nothing on the magical piece of paper that says uh, we are looking at raising this amount of taxes from 8,700 homes or anything like that. There's right. nothing on the spreadsheet that tells you that. Uh, it's just a, a number and a dollar amount that comes back. This is what a penny is going to generate, um, and the pennies all those homes, and, and this is what it, what it creates. Based on the taxes, we know them that day. And um, so we can go over a little bit of the budgetary process now, or you want to wait till the end? Um, I have Whatever one more question. Want to do. So okay. gas prices, fuel costs are, have doubled and are likely to continue to increase. Have we accounted for that? I'm sure yeah, we, we burn a lot of gasoline. We and have. Fuel. Um, I sent out a questionnaire to the uh, some other managers the other day, and I think uh, Alan at the COG is going to have a, a meeting to talk about this, plus COLA and those kind of things going forward. Um, some towns are looking at four-day work weeks uh, just so they don't have to drive. Employees don't have to drive at fifth day back to work back and forth. Um, so then they started, you know, one town says, well, that's good, but, you know, my 30 employees live in the town, so what am I supposed to do? And, you know, and so those kind of questions started to come around, but it, it's not a fix-all for everybody. Um, some towns were looking at limiting travel. Uh, and then the person from another town sent the thing back and says, so what are you going to do for services? You know, what happens when uh, Mr. Martin calls and says, hey, you know, the, there's a load of rocks out there in front of my house. Well, we're not going to go get rocks today because we're on fuel conservation. Um, so it, it's a little fine line that we're going to have to look at, and hopefully it levels off. But uh, it is something we're going to probably have to talk about in the next month or so to see what we do going forward. Um, but other towns and us are, are sort of running ideas by each other to see what's practical, because we are a service provider. Right. Um, green, green for Life, you know, we're hoping they don't call us and say, hey, we're reducing it to one time a week. You know, because the cost is hitting them hard. Uh, and we have a thing in our contract for fuel. So we're hoping that that number, all of a sudden, we get a notice next month saying, hey, garbage has doubled or because of fuel prices. But that, I think the, so that's your, something that we go have to look at. Your question, I don't know if you're aware of it, we have bulk storage for gasoline and diesel fuel. So it, when we buy it in bulk like that, we get a little bit of a discount off the market, but not a whole lot, but it helps somewhat. Oh, yeah, and then no, for, I'm sure. For example, you know, you're talking about hurricane planning. David will send out to the, all the department heads, says, you know, you better fuel up now, and then they'll call, Public Works will get a hold of the gas and the fuel people, and they'll come down, they'll fill these tanks back up before hurricanes if we have enough notice. And then sometimes they'll say, we don't have it. We couldn't get it from the supplier. But most of the time, they'll come down and fill them all back up before the hurricanes hit. So, then our plan so is, that's one yeah. of the things that's on the checklist. And once we do that, then, then we go to the stores that we have our credit on. Instead of using our own fuel, we'll start using the credit fuel. Yes. And then once the storm hits, then we have our fuel in reserve. Yep. So, so we do have plans. <laughs> Out there. No, I was just and, curious. What? And that, that, not that to suggest is, you didn't have plans. That, that's, that is something that you we have do. A lot to people, of plans. people just look at you like, y'all do what now? Why do you go take their gas for? Well, I'd rather use their gas than yeah, but you're taking the gas for your citizens. So now the citizens don't have gas. Well, I, but we need to be here to provide the service. Yes. And they're good to us. I mean, they just run an account. The guys pull in up there with those big trucks, and they fill up fire trucks and everything else, and then they'll just bill us. Yeah. Eventually for work. So I try to pay yeah. that bill as quickly as it comes in. Um, them doing that I work. imagine there'll be increased use of golf carts in the town this summer. <laughs> Probably will. At $5 a gallon. If we you put them on the right roadways. <laughs> yeah. And that's, do you have a target date for when you well, hope to have those defined? We're going to, uh, we're going to wait a little bit longer on the sign to be made by uh, a different agency. And if we don't get that sign soon, we're going to put our sign up down at First Street saying no golf cars <laughs> beyond this point. Um, and they'll come take it down, but hopefully they'll put their sign up in its place. But uh, we do have some signage and stuff that we know that we want to put out to direct people to stay off the road. Right. Uh, Councilman Martin had, had made some suggestions earlier about that. 
And that is something we're looking at to do uh, before the season gets here, either us doing it or the state doing it. Um, that one challenge is the stretch of road if you, on the other side of Oak Island Drive, as you're approaching Middleton, you've got like a block and a half that you have to go. Um, that presents a challenge for golf cart riders. We'll see how they go. So I guess whether there's leeway for that little stretch so they then can go down Middleton to the beach. No, the leeway is they they have to take 40th. First Street northwest or southwest down to the what is that little road that pops out right White. there at the bridge. White. White, yeah. That's that's the that's the designated route that they have. They cannot enter the intersection at Middleton and Oak Island Drive. That's the right way. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to see where that is because I'm not. You see a lot of people. As soon as you right like, now. if you're coming from the beach, you cross over Davis Canal. It's yeah. the first left. Okay. They have. They're they're supposed to take that left and then travel using First Street West to cross over Oak Island, go all the way up to Yacht, and then they can go anywhere they want to. Got it. Yeah. They are not permitted to enter that intersection, and that's been. That's been one of the areas of my greatest concern is because the, all the golf carts that enter that traffic light intersection that it's not permissible, but yet they do it. Have we but, thought about putting paint on the road, marking it? Well, we we, again, we've talked about signage, right? Um, we haven't road. gone to the extent of painting the road, but um, we have talked about directional signs and education and you know everything we can it, do. It's an hourly, daily event. Yeah, because as soon as they get to hang that right at that red light, then they're on East Oak Island Drive, and they ain't getting off of that thing. No, <laughs> they're not on. They're not supposed to be on that road either. So, um, I had one question uh, for staff. Um, we had met a while back uh, about some budgetary items, if you recall, Mr. Kelly, that came out of the January retreat. Um, and one of the items on my list, you had indicated that it would be discussed at this retreat, and that's economic development. And I don't think it's in our envision the three to five year future. I think it's something that's needed to be addressed now, currently. And I thought we had spoke about some research going on for this upcoming budget year around a, a position that would be sort of multi-purpose, would do some economic development work, but do some other administrative stuff for the town. Uh, what I didn't hear that in your report, and I hope it's not a part of our envision report because I think it's something that we need to address. It was going to be something that we brought up during the administrative budget part, <laughs> um, but um, it is something that we had looked at with the Williamson track. Uh, you're talking about thin, be, things being thin, um, administration is thin. Um, Mr. Hatton has uh, an individual that can assist him uh, some, uh, and then uh, I have staff that assist me, but uh, the, I, I'm it, and that's all I got. Um, but the workloads and everything that we've been having and the growth and everything like that, uh, we're starting to, um, wanting to make sure that we don't drop something or something goes by that we put on the back burner for a minute and don't pick back up. Um, so an economic development person, um, assistant manager or whatever it's going to be, um, we all know that um, at some point, um, Retirement would, would be a topic of mine <laughs> at some point. Um, but uh, not, nothing right this moment, I hope, uh, or not planning on. Um, well, let me second Mr. Martin's concern, which has been my concern for four years. Uh, I don't think that we can wait, with all due respect, and I hope you have a wonderful landing wherever you're headed. The issues that we have now, if not dealt with, are going to compound. Now... What I heard you say about Wes is that we're going to continue to have him on retainer. So, in effect, I'm seeing him as our economic development person mm -hmm. to some degree. I know he's, hour, he's limited in terms of the hours, but we need a dedicated professional with experience, knowledge, et cetera. And we need him now, uh, not just for Williamson, but for the Everything. streetscape, 
for all the things that we're, we're trying to figure out, you know, where to put amenities, how to pay for the rec center, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's desperately needed, and I think if you propose it, you'll find majority support on this on this council for it. Yeah, I mean, in the, the conversation uh, started because of the request for us to do a better job of marketing what's commercially available within the town's jurisdiction. Um, you know, the county is very active in business development. There's actually a board that meets uh, that we aren't invited to, but we would be allowed to submit material to that board. Mm -hmm. So uh, the request initially came in as I wanted a nice marketing collateral or glossy that highlights the, the amazing benefits of the town of Oak Island. Um, you know, we, we have uh, customers all four seasons of the year here, right? We're, we're unique as a beach town because we have a customer base that survives a year round season and, and is available um, to, to go shopping and, and spend money and drive an economy. So the idea was to market Oak Island so we get more real estate looking at our available properties within our jurisdiction. And to that, of course, staff, Mr. Kelly was like, well, really, who's going to do that work, right? It, either it would be a volunteer effort or we use it through Wes, through some retainer, or we potentially look at a staff position. Uh, and, and Mr. Kelly brought up the idea about this, you know, assistant town manager slash economic development person, right, that we would start grooming and bringing along who would have time to work on some marketing for us on our commercial uh, parcels and now with the Williamson property getting rezoned on Tuesday of this week we're, we're we've you're, got to get ahead of that now you're preaching to the choir here let me give you the history I have thrice proposed an economic development position has never passed through council has never enjoyed majority support to what you just the list you just added we need an economic plan for 801 we need a marketing plan for the golf course. We're talking about a streetscape. We're talking about Williamson. I can go on and on. Other than you, Mark, and you already have a job, there isn't anyone up here with marketing or economic development expertise. In fairness to our manager, he's already overwhelmed. That's very clear. So how do we address that need? We either, from my point of view, are going to extend Wes and we're going to use a consultancy to fix it, or near term to put the dressing on the wounds, or the bolder, you know, succession planning idea would be to get someone who eventually comes in as the assistant, helps David, and then takes the job. So that that's a new concept. We we can't even get an economic development person through the council, and so it's the right time to do that at our next budget meeting. Well, uh, this is the right budget cycle to do it. If we wait, these opportunities will be lost. And on the other side of the coin, if we wait, things will continue as they are. So, for example, in 801, which council, again, previous council, purchased with the proviso, if it doesn't break even, we'll sell it again. We also bought a parking lot, which I voted for it because we were going to have paid parking. Paid parking went down. So... We've got a lot of pieces of things that don't work the way they're supposed to work. Now, Elisa has done a great job. 801 is booking. But the question is, what more does she need, and how do we get the profit there, right? Golf course. How do we make the golf course more yeah. marketable, more appealing? How do we do streetscape? I, there's a long list of things that we just can't do without the, it's the bandwidth question. We don't have it. We need it. Bandwidth and expertise. That's, that's what, yes. I'm sorry. Being yeah, colloquial, yes. It's got to be both. Right. So here's, here's the argument that I made that was unsuccessful. And I invite you to make a better argument. I really do. Because you, you've lived that position. So I understand and respect that. In a 30-some-odd million dollar budget, which is growing, in, in a town which is going to explode, right, with growth, an eighty ninety thousand dollar $90,000 person, it shouldn't even be a consideration if it gives us what we need. And the beauty of our situation is everyone's an at-will employee. So if they don't produce, 
right? So they have goals, they have targets. Not to mention grant funding. I'm making down a list of things that we need people to help us with. Without the capacity, I'm not sure how we get any of those things done. Right. I mean, I think um, certainly a gap um, filler would be some sort of retainership of services in the interim. Long term, uh, meaning to your point, we've got to have it in this year's budget discussions, is some sort of staff position that's multi-purpose, administrative, yet focused on economic development and, and the task underneath of that. And the reason why I brought it up before we walked away from this discussion and we went into our Envision the Future discussion is I want council to understand, to your point, John, there's, we're gonna have a decision to make during budget workshops, right? We're gonna get a lot of requests and, and the answer is gonna be no. So when we start saying no to some of these needs in other departments, I don't want us to forget about this staff position because this could be a, a priority yes that may mean other no's in, in other areas of either staffing or resources. I so I, I just wanna make sure that everyone understands that I believe the timing is now to your point, and, and yeah, let's put that argument together so we don't lose it when we go into our budget workshop this year. I, I appreciate you joining the fight. I think for the first time, you're gonna have a majority, sir. Maybe, well, let's look at it the other way. The manager, right? David has a $40 million sand project. That alone is gonna tie him down, right? Um, so yeah, we need the capacity, and I hope we do have the support, Bill, thank you. Um, how, think, we, how we do it is less important than the fact that we do it. And we do it now before this gets out of control. I mean, I, I wish, uh, and I've said it to them before, I wish both Davids would stay for 10 more years, but uh, uh, I know that's not going to happen. And uh, we would be wise if we had a uh, contract negotiator, an economic development person, a grant writer, uh, an assistant town manager on the staff. Uh, they could wear all those hats under David's tutelage and uh, good oh. things. We'd be, we'd be in a position to go forward. Well, and I think, you know, the fact that Leland just appointed an economic development officer tells the story. You know, the horse is out of the barn. It's, it's, they've already lost control of that community. It's too late. I mean, the best that they can do is ameliorate what's coming. But they should have had that in place way before they built down that highway. So what I just heard everyone describe, and I ran on economic development, as you know. So this is also near and dear to, to my interests as well. Um, what the skill sets based on the person that we've collectively described are diverse. And I would encourage us to build a profile for the individual that we're looking for. And that alone could really help with uh, identifying a person who's gonna actually be able to fulfill these diverse needs, who has a, the resume and the experience. This is not a position for someone starting their career. This is not we, we someone have, who... I, I agree, we have a unique advantage, Mark has already walked this walk. He knows. David but, is aware. Yes, but you know? we're talking about multiple mm -hmm. skill sets within the same person to fill. So that's where building that profile, I think, would be immensely helpful. A person, even on a consultancy basis, would be a step forward. Oh, I'm not arguing any of that. No, the larger, higher full-time person is, is what I propose, and it may have been a bridge too far. It was a bridge too far. We're in a different place now, so we'll see where council is. But yes, I think I'd be happy to send my profile. But Mark knows this profile, and I would hope, sir, you take the lead. He knows what we need. And someone who can do marketing, who can do the economic development, who can be the town manager, who can, you know. So yes, I think we need to build a profile so that we're not looking at and interviewing the wrong people. Right. That's um, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my only point. And the other is we have five months of a police chief we've not spent this year. So is that not something we can 
divert, carry over and divert to, that's almost half a year of, uh, we're not gonna hire them before July, okay. August or September. Those, those numbers, we don't, I mean, it just goes to general fund. Yeah. It's not a carryover. If it was a project identified, that money goes, but a regular line item within a budget, it goes back to general fund and you just spend it next year. But, right. at least we but I'm saying that money should be somewhere, down, right? right? However we spend it. We bought, we bought bullets case, with it. <laughs> in this case, bullets with it. We're, we're talking, we did, you've already spent it, you bought bullets. We, we, again, it's a supply and demand kind of thing right this minute. And when you find something that you, they call you and say, hey, your your bullets came in from two years ago that you haven't gotten yet. Do you, <laughs> do you want an extra case or something? And yeah. I didn't say we spent the whole money, but no. we've, but been, it, we've been spending Hopefully there's money that we, that was earmarked for something that could at least contribute, because um, we're looking at nine months of salary. We're not looking at 12 months of salary. Um, if we have someone on board in August or September, then, you know, you're only looking at nine months. Like John said, for a $30 million salary. budget, surely we can find eighty, ninety, hundred thousand dollar $100,000 for a top-notch person one time. Well, it wouldn't cost you that the first year is my point. Yeah, it would cost you seven-tenths of a... Yeah. Or perhaps less, depending on when you hired them. All right, I think we can build a profile. Mark's got the lead. And uh, I, I frankly think the public has come to the awareness that we need expertise in these matters. And, you know, they're looking at it as this is really scary, you know? thousands of new units and people and what's the plan and for that matter mark what i missed but i just because i had a long list in my head um retail development within williamson and on 211 also critical very critical there you go well along the same lines i saw the williamson track people talking to the planning board last month i i don't want that situation going forward I like to have a, a representative of the town negotiate our terms and conditions on that. We can save right money by just having just having Mark do it. I mean, he's got free time. <laughs> yeah, he's only got two jobs. It's a, a three jobs now. <laughs> Not by tomorrow. His kids are growing. <laughs> Madam Mayor, can we take a break? Um, yes, because I believe our new chief police, police chief is here. here. I saw him show up. Oh. You. Yeah, he just came in <laughs> with his wife. Not discuss personal Tracy. <clears throat> okay, we're ready to reconvene. Yes, ma'am, please. Mr. Hatton, do you want to talk about the budget schedule? Thank you, Mayor. I have passed out to each of you the budget development calendar for the upcoming budget year, July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. And as you go down through there, please look and see if all these dates are good. This is pretty much the standard dates, same weeks of the months that we have used every year. And hopefully we have no conflicts with anybody being out of town or, but as you can see, you know, we, uh, about every week we start meeting in April and go through the different departments. For example, April 14th, you know, we'll look at the fire, police, developmental services, and if we ever have time, we always try to put another one in there in case we do go through it, but quite often we don't get through them anyway, so we hit up all the time. And of course, the most important is down our June 14th, which is your scheduled council meeting. That's when we'll present the budget for your all's approval and publishing but again look and see yes, the dates that we have proposed and see if there's any conflicts with anybody's personal schedule if not so David you're saying April 14th 19th 22nd 26th and May 3rd you all plan to meet with the town council in person yes sir what we normally do David and myself will have two tables up there and the department head will be in between us and they'll present their budget and David and I will pipe in when we feel it's necessary. 
and you all are obviously free to ask questions and you'll have what I do you'll have when next when the first budget starts you'll have a budget book each one of you have your own book with your name on it and everything and you'll be able to take notes put everything you ever want in there the only issue we have is because yes the salaries of the town employees is public knowledge because we talk about benefits they cannot leave this room they have to stay here got it until the you know, until the budget's passed and then you can take them or leave them. Or At the end, we'll collapse all that. Yeah. So you don't see individual benefits or Got what the person right, has. Exactly. But when to it, start with, we leave it like that, like Mr. Hatton saying, so you can see um, in my department is me and David, Lisa, mm -hmm. Rose, and you'll see all that. Got it. Later, it'll be just, it'll be shrunk. Right, it'll go to one line item when it gets published. Mr. Hatton, uh, yes, sir. Can, can I ask for the uh, same indulgence as in previous years? I'd like to see the delta calculated from budget previous to the budget being requested so I don't have to do the math. I can focus on listening to what they're saying. Okay. So, for example, the fire guys are always up. You know, so the delta is 4%. percent delta's mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think last year you gave us a column so we didn't have to calculate. I believe I did. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was very helpful. Um, and that way we can discuss exactly where the surge in the budget is, where it's constant, you know, and so on and so forth. So that, that, I think it would be helpful for the new members too. All right, Mr. Kraft. That's a good point, Mr. Cuba. There you go. You don't have to calculate. Great, thank you. I have last year's document, so the detail, but it's a, just to be able to eyesight it is, is helpful. Thank you. You're very so welcome. Some of the work we identified today, including the economic development slash whatever, um, do you? How do you? How would you prefer to integrate the costs of but, the priorities? Is will y'all do the research based on um, things you've done in the past? Do you want us to estimate costs based on uh, the goal or the objective? What would you? Quite often, like if we have a new position that we don't have never had before, we'll go to the League of Municipalities. They publish all this information for different size municipalities and cities in the town, and that gives us a good guideline of where we can start. Yeah, but as far as the items that you addressed today, um, some of the park and rec things, when we get to those, uh, you'll see the schedule lays out who, who's talking that day. Um, and we'll incorporate the things that you talked about today. Um, the economic developer, that'll go in the administration part. Okay. Uh, park and Rec, as you know, Park and Rec. And then okay. Some of the things that overlaid that we discussed that several departments may be involved in, uh, the money may be in one department, but it'll have other departments right. involved in as well. Exactly. And Mr. Hatton, he, in, his, in his verbiage part, he'll identify whatever the new criteria is. You'll, you'll be able to see it. Okay. And then... Oh. May, may I ask again for another order of indulgences here? So one of the things that council previous, and I, I would assume this council will support it as well, when we've talked about um, upper administration salaries, which I assume an economic developer on a full-time basis would be, we've always indexed it comparatively to the market, which is right. what I think you're saying you're going to do. Okay. So that we know for comparable communities who have one, this is what the median salary is. We can see it. Yeah, and you have um, the pay grade scale is also adopted at the budget time as well. Um, we looked at uh, three departments this year, fire department, uh, development services, and stormwater, and we price each one of those positions out on what the common market is. And then we look at that to see what kind of infill or raising of positions or are we comparable or those kind of things. And we look at the population that we have, we don't have but so many coastal communities inside that population. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, so we'll look at um, other towns, Holden Beach, Ocean Isle, Wrights Beach, Carolina Beach. Leland. And we'll look at those to try to match. Leland's uh, sort of a world of his own, um, but we do reference them. But if you want to look at Leland, then every, every position we got just got to raise uh, because that's what they basically did a year ago to try to bring in people they went to almost a seven and a half to nine percent increase across the board, and when they went across the board, they went across per employee, um, and that's something that we're not recommending because that's something we can't afford. Exactly. But we're looking at um, this year on our pay scale, um, 
you'll see that we have now taken uh, any full-time position with the town of Oak Island now be over $15 an hour, where it wasn't that before. So we have moved all that up to that pay grade, so now every full-time person will be that. And we're looking at a, a fixed part-time as well, but it's sort of harder to look at because you have summer camps, you have college students coming in, you have some assistance from the um, um, South Harbor Boat People Yacht Club, right. uh, where they pitch in on, the, on that camp. So those things, but we also have permanent part-time, and you'll see where we have tried to bring all those in to be the same price range as well. And then you have the peer people, part-time, uh, and then you have the par three clubhouse people that are part-time. And, and when Rebecca was here, she brought them in. Some people are getting paid $8.05 an hour. Some people are getting paid $16 an hour. So we, we've tried to take that because you lose people and everything. So we've tried to bring everything together. And, and I think this year we'll have a better flat range for everyone uh, part-time wise. We looked at uh, last year, uh, bringing in sworn officers for beach patrol. Uh, we had looked at Emerald. That was a, an island who had um, gone up on theirs the year before because they couldn't find anybody. They were at $15. They went to $17.50. Couldn't find anybody. Went to $20. Still couldn't find nobody. So now they're back to $17.50. I mean, they said, we don't need to keep it at $20. Um, but they still haven't found nobody. So uh, we put ours at $20 last year, and we, and we filled it. Uh, now, those people have gone on to fill part-time positions. They're no longer a part-time beach patrol. So we're, we're advertising now for those people and also for, um, we ran the sign, electronic sign saying, hey, 1750, non-sworn, blah, blah, blah. And we got bombarded with people. So we're able to look at things and then we'll evaluate um, the sworn officers that we want on the beach. And we'll be able to, uh, I just want to talk to the chief a minute ago. Um, I told him I was going to send him some stuff over the weekend I need him to start looking at uh, to get his opinion. And, and he's going to set some time next week so we can call and talk about a few of these budgetary things. So when he gets here, you know, it's not day one. Um, so I, I think that's going to be good going forward. But we do understand what we've got to do, and we'll try to present it to you in a manner. Um, but it is, we do have a schedule when we go through these things. And when we get to the end of it, um, when me and Mr. Hatton closed the book that day, we're, we're hoping that you've asked us all the questions and everything because we gave you the two hours to beat us up on that topic. <laughs> and the department head sitting between us and we want you to ask the questions of us because the budget does have so much information in it. And we know there'll be questions that come later, those kind of things that near the end. But if we could get it 80% complete within that department, some big items, I understand it'll be a thing that we talk about for taxes or whatever. But this, the um, $620 for uniforms that we've used for the last five years and those kind of things and $200 for Asha boots and those kind of light items that John was talking about, and you'll see those are fixed items. And those are items, if you want to talk about them, we'll talk about them all day. But those are things that don't really influence our budget. They're our daily operational things, and you'll see what the three-year period is. But Mr. Hatton, when he, you'll, you'll see when he has new items in there, we'll try to bold those this year or something uh, so you'll see that in the verbiage part because he has a Word document that goes with it. And and he does very well trying to separate. He goes crazy that week trying to separate everything out like that. But I, I think it will help the first-timers to be able to look back and see what, well, there, this this line item went up $100,000. Well, yeah, but he described it. It was for a study for this or a study for that. or So I think that will help you. Big time. But at the end of the day, when we get finished that section, it, it's better for us if we, we're sort of locked in on the basics. Um, Personnel-wise, those kind of things, that'll be an ongoing thing through the whole budget. But uh, it, it will help us if we can narrow down what we can narrow down during that topic. And, I, and I, any question you want to ask, we can answer, or we'll try to answer. But as we get further in the budget, we're going to have different department heads, just like Mr. Hatton said, in front of you. We'll always, Mr. Hatton always has his running tally book with him. Um, mine's what we present. So me and him don't get mixed up. So I can I can go back and say this is what it was, and he can say what well, it's finished. So we can we have a reference between each other. Um, but we want to make sure that we provide the information to you, what you want. And if you in the first two meetings you come back and say, well, David, you know we don't need a department head to talk about the basic items. We want him just to hit the high and the low. 
or not the low, the high. So if you went up 5% or 10% on a line item, we need to know what it is. Um, because those numbers don't really hit the budget or the tax rate that much. It's the other things that hit the tax rate. And when I present, when we present the personnel, you'll have one sheet in that budget for each department. And we list out, of course, all the employees. And you'll see out to the side the full-time employees in that department, part-time if they have any. And if the department head is, or there's vacancies, we, we show you the vacancies. And then again, then we'll show you new position. That way you can see it and you can ask the department, <coughs> why do you need this new position if they haven't already explained it to you? Right. So it's right there for you to say, okay, they want two people, why type deal. Where they may have already explained why they needed the two people. Excellent. And you see the schedule is two hours a day. Uh, we've learned that um, numbers after two hours, and if we try to do three departments or four departments, and things start getting to get mixed up. Uh, things start getting diffused. So there is, you know, several meetings to get through the budget. But I think it's a, it's a working number. Um, but how do you all feel? I mean, if you look near the end of it, you got where we'll present the budget on May 10th. Um, that gives the public... Um, a month to make a comment, uh, and then the July or the June 14th meeting is when you can take action on it. Uh, we'd have a public hearing. We'd hear the comments and those kind of things. Some people say, "Well, you just heard our comments. How can you vote on it tonight?" Um, those kind of things is the reason why I'm bringing that up. Is there some other kind of action or some kind of plan that y'all want to do? The sooner we know that, the because we'd have to move some of these calendar dates uh, to try to make those kind of things work. So short of a special meeting for a hearing on the budget, public hearing on the budget, I don't know how else we could do it. Yeah, last year we had three people. Yeah, and we've, we've uh, had special meetings in the past to have public hearings just for the budget. And they don't. And in all honesty, it's just not been productive. Um, well attended, I would say. Oh, okay. We've had as low as one person make a comment. Yeah, that's our answer. Because so. <laughs> these are these are video. I mean, this is live meetings. Yes, I so understand. the public sees it, so they can come to the May meeting and say, "Hey, I've been watching Bill say he wants to add six cent because he's wanting to build a Taj Mahal." You know, and you know we don't agree with that bill, or Mr. Martin, we don't. You know, we don't believe we need this. Or they can voice their opinions to y'all at any time. Um, I, so it's say, not like they don't hear it. I'll say this: this, this is. Um, Thoughtful budgetary process to a fault. You could argue there's too much. By the time we get done, um, <laughs> you'll have an opinion on the budget. I will have an opinion. I like to think of it as the, you know, what's the story of the budget? What's the tale? Because the budget basically tells people what your values are, what you think is important. And at that point, it'll be public. There's a public hearing, and then there's another bite at the apple, so to speak. The night we adopt it. That's plenty. You're going to get the predictable array of things, especially if you're raising taxes in any form fashion. Or you're going to get, well, how come you didn't do this? Well, because it's $10 million. You know, how come you didn't? All typical stuff. But this, my point is there's ample opportunity for the public. What's most important is you'll have many opportunities to actually dig into the budget. And that's the way it's always, since I've been here, Last five years, that's the way it's worked. Right? So I, I trust these gentlemen in terms of the detail that you're going to get what you need and more. David um, Hatton, on, on March 18th, what is outside agency request return to Rose? All right. We have each year we send out eight to ten requests of any agencies that uh, a good one the airport, for example, they'll get a letter asking for any contribution or help from the town based on something that they do on behalf of the town. Uh, or the, the lady who takes care of the birds, right. for example. Yeah. Very good cause. And, you know, we She might ask for money. Yeah. She, she may. And then there has been some agencies that's asked for money who weren't in the confines of the town of Oak Island, and they were turned down. Uh, Brunswick Literacy Council, I think they normally will ask for a little bit of money. Senior Center. Gotcha, gotcha. 
the town, uh, the state law says that you should get, you know, a contribution from a municipality should be to an organization that is doing something on behalf of the town. And that's how it reads. So, okay. you, you know, you can't just give it willy-nilly to any group out there. Got you. Easy. Right. Easily we wouldn't want explained. To. I got you. Good deal. Thank I'm you, glad sir. we do that, actually. So, um, I'm also imagining that as we go, you talk about the story of the budget, um, that like the uh, the matching funds, as we unveil that, there'll be a narrative that goes with it. So we'll build a narrative when we make the budget well, public. Depends on, you know, sometimes there are multiple narratives. You know, my narrative for the last budget was surviving a pandemic, lowering financial expectations, getting as lean as we possibly could, preserving old positions. You know, there was a logic to the budget the way it was presented. Right. I don't know what, what this story of this no, budget... No, 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 I'm just saying, but we'll build it as we go. Well, I mean, you're right. The, first, the top, the headline piece is going to be whatever we decide to do with the sand, because that, that's everyone is focused on that. But then there'll be other sub-stories within it. I mean, personnel requests, look like that'll be part of it, you know. The rec center, you know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what where the majority lands where council wants to go. It's not about, they're, they're just simply presenting. You're deciding, so. Right, no, I get that. Okay. Um, I'm thinking more outward. Yeah, we need a story of the budget. A story you know, we of need, the budget. We need to be able to explain to the people what we're doing. Dust fire so. Why it is yeah. the way it is. Well, we got, we've got good measure of fiscal conservatism up here, so. I put myself in that group. So. But that doesn't mean. I'm where you are. It just means I'm fiscally conservative. <laughs> Some are more you stay down on that end. You stay on that end. Um, where do we talk about fee <coughs> schedules as each department comes forward? Uh, we usually talk about that when we look at each other and have nothing else to talk about that day, and we've talked the, the topic out. We'll 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 pick some of them for certain days. Okay, that's uh, a good But we'll try to lump them with the, the department that's in front of you. What's what's the net sum of what we collect in fees? Because this is not as big as it may appear to be. What's the net, yeah. net sum? We added up all the fees we collected last year. What did we get? Oh, well, I'd have to go get it, John. I, I, I ain't got Do we get there. to a million? How much? A million. And what type of fees? Like all building fees. development. All fees. Building oh, permits. It's over a million. Yeah. Pardon? Over a million. Okay. So, so you had to look at the development so, permits, okay. water, so. So raising them 15% would be a significant amount of money. That's, I think that's what you're trying to get to. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And the corresponding effect. I mean, this, I don't want to start the budget conversation now, but if you raise building permit fees and licenses, you may retard the growth that's coming. And it's, you could argue that's good, or you could right. argue that's not good for us. You know, but that'll be a, a conversation. Using developmental services as an example of raising the rates or the fees on that, I would want to have Steve Edwards come in and explain to you, Council, why he feels that that should be raised. Or he says, no, we're getting adequate amount of money for what we have to do for this. But then there may be, and I think there's quite a few items out there that they spend a lot of hours on and get very little for it. Uh, and I also don't want to be the cheapest state in town either, you know, where I don't want to um, exorbitantly raise oh, right. permit costs. No. But if we're charging $100 and someone else is charging 1000 there's something wrong with that, and it's a missed opportunity. So um, I think we need to squeeze every penny equitably across the, equitably. across the board, especially if we're... Uh, if there's an in increase in the tax rate, you know, I think we need to be able to say that we've collected money um, across the board to the degree we can uh, without showing a, a deference to any particular, you know, economic slice of what happens on the island. Um, and when we're talking about fees and those kind of things, um, we don't need to 
if we're thinking about a dollar fifty raise on something like that, um, we need to explain what it is because that's the those are the items that the public's that, that's their focal point. They forget everything good that you talked about that day. They they hit you on that one point because that is an increase in what they have to pay on an item. Uh, so we need to make sure that when we present a number and when you start discussing a number. That's the number that we're discussing and that's what it's about because we don't want to give a, a number and then um, we talk about it one meeting the next meeting and we have 10 people get up and they say we shouldn't do this and then council says well I think we're going to lower that number back down because then that doesn't give us the credibility that we're looking at across the board to try to look at something else I agree I agree um, no I think that's enough said so we'll give you a I mean Hatton does spreadsheets on a lot of things, and then I do them a different way just to see if we end up with the same kind of numbers. But when we present a, a dollar number to you, we've already looked at it several ways, I'm not saying this is right or if it's wrong, but uh, we do want y'all to have some you know, level of it, it's okay because that's we have looked at it because we don't want to raise something that's beyond what we believe it needs to be just to start you know, increasing a fund for future use, unless there's something capital outlay or something out there that we know that's gonna be an improvement a year down the road or two years down the road. And you're gonna to have to look at a, a gradual increase over time to be able to get to that final product. Right. And we'll lay that out to you as well. Right, so that we're moving towards. Are you, are you gonna meet with the department heads and tweak their numbers and tell them, golly gee, this is totally out of, out of whack before we well, meet with them, or is it we all going to see that those Hatton, numbers for the first time? Hatton sends them a sheet, and it has all the numbers on there that's prior current, years. prior years, and where we're at currently, and they can see where they're at currently. But he gives it to them anyway. Uh, once they look at it, then they they lay down their request. They send it in to Mr. Hatton. He puts it on the spreadsheet, and he starts copying me with the the numbers. And then I start looking. I may go ahead and start talking to the department head because he's still lo loading other departments. Yeah. And I'll start picking on them to see, all right, so what are we really talking about here? The good thing about sitting here and already been through every department over there, I know what <laughs> I know what all that is. It's a wish list um, or so not. So yeah. I can honestly say they don't give you a wish list because um, they know that's not what the intent of this budget is. Um, everything that you see in front of us has been something that's been discussed. Um, they're not. They're not saying... Uh, or Steve's not saying, hey, I need to add two more zoning people because, you know, we could do, you know, this or that. They, they've looked at it because there's a reason behind it. Um, but wish list, and, and people refer to that all the time, but it, it's, everything in here is a valued number. And uh, all that is not even presented because they know that's the first thing, because we're going to look at last year and the year before. We already know what those numbers are. So there is no... For well, the most part, they can justify their request. Every, every line item has may to be May win on it, may not win on it, but every they can justify it. Yeah. Now, we may look at something and say, you know, we didn't spend this this past two years in this um, line item, and you need a two or $300 more in that one. That line item may decrease 200 and it went to that other line item. But when you come look at the bottom number, it may be within the same 5%. But it'll have a running total, so you'll see what the percentage is of what the change is. But we do go through it every line item with I'm sure we don't want the department head set up here and go well I need just using Steve for example two zoning techs and Dave Kelly and I look at each other and go where'd that come from you know yeah 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 when they come in they present the numbers to us we look at the numbers at that point it's Hatton's so when they come in and sit down at the table that day that is Hatton's number and he whatever that we he have can... talked about whatever we have cut whatever we have circled that is now our budget number. It is not their intent to say the other number because that is no longer an item on the table. So we eliminate that process. Gotcha, that's what I needed to know. Thank you. We have some very good department heads that know. Yeah, no, I'm sure, I'm sure. I have a tenure here. Very good, they know what the program is. Any other questions on budget? From the council? Not from this quarter, Madam Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and in this corner. <laughs> I will refrain at this point in time 
until we get started. Um, in deference for your time, uh, would there be an objection to um, possibly looking at another strategy for an envisioning exercise? Uh, may I offer an alternative to your alternative? Go ahead. Uh, yes, I think we, you know, we're, I'll speak for myself, nearly, nearly shot at this yes, point. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Um, I'd like to close, though, because we didn't get to this. Um, what, is, what is the one thing that you would hope to see in the next three to five years? And if you agree to that, I'll, I'll begin with it. Sure. Um, and so I had economic development was flourishing, but Mark took care of that, so I thank him for that. Um, I think one of the things that we should consider is becoming an art, music, theater, dance community and really bringing together our artistic community, much the way Southport does. We've, we've got pieces of that in place, the concerts. We have some uh, art that we display. But you know, over the last couple of uh, years, I've run into sculptors. I, I, we're awash in yoga instructors and, and movement and dance. Lisa's involved with theater. Uh, it seems to me we could do more with that. It would be another way of saying Oak Island is distinctive. We have the beach, we have 801, we have the golf course, but also we're a very artistically oriented community. Uh, I think people would like that. And I think there's a way to do art and music for children as well as adults. And again, we have a, a, a really unbelievable venue there. So. Just a thought. Something else to market. And Brunswick County Council of the Arts is very excited about the possibility of working with Oka Island. We talked about, you know, using public art as a means to uh, kind of unite the community and create uh, pathways through the island with art being either a destination or a place to pause and reflect. Um, uh, and when we do streetscape, or when we do exactly. the park, we have sculptors here, we have painters here. Yes. We have the opportunity to, to bring forward public art. I don't know if any of you have ever been to Barcelona in Spain. No. Barcelona has more public art than any other city in the world except Paris. And it's an immediate and very soothing impact when you're there. When you walk down the Rivo Pobles Boulevard, it's all about art. It's interesting. And they feature it. Just a thought. That's my thought. I'm, I'm done. Bill? Uh, caught me off guard. Uh, and maybe David, Kelly, and I can talk about this next week. I would like to see us uh, use what we have more so, uh, William Smith Park and uh, the Parks and Rec Department right now is really, really stepping up. Heather's on top of her game with all the different things she's come up with uh, in the last two or three months, which is exciting. Uh, I don't know what the answer is. David probably has a better answer than I do, but uh, uh, I hate seeing William Smith Park not being used very often. Uh, I know the Little League asked for it the other day and there were some questions and some different things, but uh, I would just like to see us figure out how to, how to use some of the nice stuff we got. I would agree. Charlie? Well, I just think I, the overall feel I get from everything is we're on, we're on the right track and uh, trying to get ahead of the game, as John said, as opposed to having it get a hold of us. And uh, I feel comfortable with it. I think it's great. Look forward to it. I would certainly support uh, John's uh, direction towards um, the arts and, and making that uh, some uh, highlight or definition of, of who we are as a community. Uh, on my list was certainly what Bill brought up around parks and recreation. I'll just add to what Bill said, uh, and that is to make sure that our parks and recreation amenities, as we uh, build more, add more, refresh others, 
that we focus on making them the absolute best to our ability with resources and with funding and with other sources of, of assistance, whether they be grants or other agencies, that we just don't highlight an amenity and check the box, that that amenity comes to be known not only in Brunswick County, but in a, in a coastal awareness to be a, a recreation destination. I, I think Oak Island has an opportunity to be a, an arts destination, a recreation destination. Um, the third item that I had on my list is not necessarily a faith-based initiative, but more of an, an initiative that I want Oak Island to be known as taking care of people. I, I think um, during some of the storms recently, you know, the hashtag OKI Strong became predominant in our community on social media. I wanna back that up. And what I mean by that is we have needs. People in our community have needs. And, and we have faith-based organizations that are addressing some of those needs. But is there a way that we can come together even stronger as a community to not just identify those needs, but let's meet those needs, right? Um, the food drive that I did last year was huge. We had so many people come, uh, not just because it was a, a campaign cycle, but because it was a true, let's give back to the community opportunity to fill Matthew's ministry food bank. And we, we filled it that, that day. We did, I thought we did an outstanding job. So it's, it's efforts like that to, that we should be rallying around uh, to make sure we're, we're taking care of people in our community to the best that we can within our limits, right? I know we have limitations as a local government, but we could absolutely help rally around some of the other organizations that are out there trying to help people. I think that's an inclination within the community. I think it's it's embedded in our our, our, cult, our community culture. Um, anything we can do to um, uh, continue to nurture that um, community wide would would be a wonderful thing. Um, yeah, I, I think, know it's. I think that's a great theme. You know whether we could call it compassionate community. And, uh, Not a bad reputation to have. And put that out there and make it clear that council is endorsing that and encouraging others to, to find their own way towards being compassionate. Um, that alone sends a message, and maybe that becomes part of our messaging. We have a more caring community. We'll figure it out. But something along those lines I like it. makes sense. And then you, bring, you start with faith-based and some of the other philanthropic groups, but you broaden it. You get bigger. And I really think that um, what Bill introduced as uh, what became the Trees to Seas certificate provides visibility to um, that would serve as a nurturing element. Yeah, that program alone could be slightly shifted to caring community, compassionate community, and other the people who are we're acknowledging. There's some good people in this town. We just need to, every once in a while, pat them on the back, in my opinion. Well, we need, we need to highlight success. I, I like that yeah. theme. You know, we focus on the negative all the time. We Thank can you. say, Here, here's something that works well. Here's, here's somebody who's doing incredible things and doing them voluntarily. You know? On, on an off-the-cuff uh, note, I was at Old Bridge Diner the other day. I'm not destitute. I went to pay for my lunch, and the lady said, uh, the lady at that other table over there paid for your lunch. And I knew her, so a couple of days later I saw her, and I said, thank you very much. That was very nice of you. She said, I'd like to do that once a week. This was your week. <laughs> wow, that's a good person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I echo everything that everyone put on the table. I love the idea of being... Uh, a destination for arts of all kinds and 
and you're right. It, uh, the arts really ripple through the entire community. Um, there are so many good artists that wow. not only come to the park, you know, for the public, but it's second wind. They get some incredible uh, bands and things, and a good many of them are local. Mm -hmm. um, There's artists who, who are displaying their, their artwork at different, different places, the senior center, stuff like that. Local people with, with that kind of talent. Um, I also like the idea of being a recreation destination. I know Friends of the Parks wants to be a destination for pickleball tournaments. And they're working very hard to expand what, uh, what they've been able uh, to build so far. Um, that's, uh, that's a real plus, and I don't know if you've been out to Bill Smith Park or around there this week, but you should because all of the uh, dugouts and the press box now have beautiful roofs over them, and it just really punctuates the park, and David's staff has done a good job on grooming the fields. It's, uh, it's a very different look and a very different feel. Um, so good job on that, David. You know what, that, Madam uh, Mayor, just one last thought. And we can take immediate, some of these things are gonna require us to, to kind of evolve the thought. But there are some immediate yeah. things we can do. Compassionate community, we already have the award set up for that. We just need to kind of say that. And we got a lot of wall space for art here, and we could say we're serious about forming an artistic community to make us a desk, and we so on. We can start here. Yeah, we can start here with us. That would be the thing. I think that's what Mark was saying in a way, right? Absolutely. I don't want to put words in your mouth. <laughs> right. No, no, you're right. Okay. There you go. So um, next steps is, Lisa, when I have your notes, um, I'll put them in the worksheet format and send them back out to you. Um, I've also taken notes. I'll try to incorporate as much of that as possible. And um, Lisa, you were going to say something else? I was just going to say, um, I think Mr. Kelly wanted council to adopt the budget calendar. Yes. So then we make a motion we adopt the budget calendar. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Excellent. That was Adopted. easy. <laughs> that might be the easiest vote you take. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Thank you for your time and attention today. I know it's a long day. Great idea on dark stuff. But uh, a lot of good work.